All right, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Mindless Horror Podcast, the podcast where we talk about everything and anything horror. I'm Anthony. There's no George today, but we have some amazing, very special guests that I've been... I'm so glad to have them on the podcast. <laughs> These guys are the reason why I started this channel. Oh, The League of Extraordinary Vloggers. How are you guys doing today? How's it going? Oh. It's, uh, it's going well. We're ready to uh, talk some horror. Oh, That's what yeah. We're here too for. kind, too kind. You're making us blush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what, guys? I owe you guys a lot. Um, I, we started watching your videos way back. Uh, I think I want to say I, I got into you guys in 2016. My cousin got into you guys a little bit before that, uh, and then he introduced me to you guys. And mm -hmm. from then, we just kind of been uh, we've been going. Uh, going strong I'm, I'm just so glad that uh there's there's a horror community like you guys there's a horror community oh, that's just been spreading i would say you guys are probably a, one of the huge inspirations behind the whole community like spreading out and stuff so uh big oh. thank you to you guys. So, uh, <laughs> yeah too kind that dude. is uh, yeah, too kind definitely we think that um the hhn community uh does have a lot of its perks but we really want the tlev community to really open anyone that yeah. even the diehard horror fans but also the casual viewer right or maybe even the scaredy cat right because oh, yeah. we get scared we want everybody oh, yeah, everybody to experience the joys of horror and so that's what really the channel is and that's why we've even made our slogan you know for a new breed of horror fans yeah so. yeah, yeah i saw that and uh you guys are um one of the things that caught my interest uh recently uh it says you guys are going to start going ghost hunting Yes, yes. Uh, that's something we've been wanting to do since uh, about a few months since we started the channel. We were like, yeah, yeah we've got to go out there and just, you know, like see what like the actual paranormal. Obviously, there have been like some limitations between me and him because there, there's a big space difference between both of us. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're, we're setting things up and I feel like we both kind of feel like now is the perfect time to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we're. I mean, it's not going to be full out, you know, we're going to, like, the, the depths of hell, right, at first. <laughs> it's going to be, like, little stuff just to make sure that, you know, our viewers like what like, we're doing. Yeah. Um, maybe we can even expand, really trying to build our community to be more open to all things horror, not just HHN, not yes. just horror events, but all aspects of horror. Uh, and then, hopefully, uh, really the summer, that's when we're going to do like the big stuff right oh, like yeah. queen mary will be oh, like yeah. this summer thing um but i think we're gonna start a little bit more local to where we're based um for for the next couple of months but yeah, yeah. come come june come july we'll be out there in the big ones mm -hmm. yeah we'll there be going go, some man. There you go. places. Uh, yeah that's interesting i there's a lot of places that uh definitely i would say i'll, I'll send you guys to check out in uh nice. the big los angeles greater los angeles area um, mm -hmm. Actually, the, the the high school I work at now, uh, believe it or not, uh, in the NPR stage because I was in drama, uh, mm -hmm. the stage is haunted. And oh, okay. Yeah, we have we have, yeah, we have a similar experience. Um, so we, we both. We yeah. both did uh, uh, musical theater in, in high school, okay. and uh, that's actually one of the places that we're thinking of going, where with a, with a special door and with one key, if you turn it and open the door, you hear a girl crying wow. in the boys' In the boys' bathroom. It, it was wow. yeah. I, I happened to stumble upon this uh, during it was during one of our rehearsals. Mm -hmm. I was like, I gotta use the bathroom, guys. I, I grab the key from the uh, our director and mm -hmm. I go to the bathroom. I open the door and I hear screaming. I drop the key and I was like, "Yeah, no, this isn't for me." Yeah, I, I don't blame you. Dude. A whole lot of nope. I don't blame you. Uh, yeah, when I, when we were out, because I was uh, I was in sound, so I would I would you know we had our little cage on stage, so I'd bring out our <laughs> equipment every day. Um, and there was one day I was in there by myself, you know, just a normal setup. It's like six period at school and stuff. And then I'm setting everything up, and all of a sudden I hear something fall in the cage, Ooh. and it scares the crap out of me. So I, I take a look because I thought it was one of my buddies just like messing with me and something. There was like no one backstage, so I, I literally left. I'm like, I'm not going to set up anything until everyone's here. So uh, that was that. Um, but yeah, I, I got a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of places for you guys to check out if you guys are interested. Sounds um, good. Sounds good. Uh, so let's get started with the show. Uh, we're sure. going to start the show like we do every week with a couple of shout outs. Uh, we got two this week. Uh, first one's going to go to you guys just for being on the podcast, uh, doing what you guys do. <laughs> uh giving us some, happy to be here yeah giving us some awesome content stuff um i just appreciate all you guys do and uh, i'm pretty sure the whole 
the whole league and the whole fan base, uh, pr- uh, you know, appreciates everything, you know? So thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, uh, and the next is going to go to the audience because without the audience, none of us would be here today. So absolutely. Um, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to do a little uh, Q&A with you guys because I'm kind of interested of uh, cool. little things of, of what you guys, uh, just your history and stuff. So first and foremost, I, I do love the name The League of Extraordinary Vloggers because I do love the movie The League of Extraordinary <laughs> Gentlemen. Um, and, and that was just uh, an awesome name. Me and George have always kind of wanted to know um, – what made you guys just want to start the channel? Like, oh, <laughs> that is an excellent <laughs> question. Right uh, Jose has always been like a film buff. Uh, yeah. He was he was definitely the one who approached me about this. He was the one who came up with the name of the League of Extraordinary Vloggers. Um, I came up with the acronym TLEV. Just gonna say. <laughs> A lot easier than saying the thing. It is. Um, but uh, so Jose took a lot of film classes uh, yeah. in high school, and then he finally got uh, the DSLR. Yeah, the DSLR, the uh, 500, was that? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. And from then, uh, you were just like, hey, let's, let's just start let's filming just some stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it came down to one day we decided, I, I, I convinced you to go to Horror Nights with me. And, you know, he hadn't been, like, into, like, Horror Nights as I have. I'd, I'd been going the past few years. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I know you're going to love it. And we went the first night, and, like, right off the bat, he was hooked. And Yeah, uh, definitely was not – see, Horror Nights came before the, the channel, for sure. Um, we, we were – I think that's what really started our friendship was yeah. – was, uh, you convinced me, like, there's this event. I was scared out of my mind. I was totally not a horror buff at all in uh, in uh, 2013. Um, but then we went, and it was it was a very crazy experience. I never thought that, you know, actually seeing people dressed as in Purge, uh, even, even the, like, just, you know, chasing you with a knife. I didn't think that would be that scary, but... Yeah, um, and the terror tram that year, I'll always remember the screaming of walkers and turning on the chainsaw as they come towards us. That was definitely a very big experience. Um, but yeah, since then, I've definitely been into uh, the horror community. But it's all thanks to all thanks to this guy. Awesome. You know, that, that's awesome because, uh, you know, I, I last night, um, like regardless, every time you guys post a video, um, I, I have the notification, so I'll watch it. Uh, even when I'm at work, I'll watch it on my lunch and stuff. But last night, I, lately I just been because uh, I've been so bored at home that I just you know I'll go I'll go and watch uh, like previous Horror Nights videos and stuff. But mm-hmm. last night I was just I just wanted to watch uh, all your guys' Horror Nights uh, last year footage because um, that year honestly it, it was an okay year last year. It, it could have been better. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> still, in my opinion, I still think 2016 was honestly the best year. Um, ever since I've been going, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, you know, I was just watching your guys' stuff last night, and I just get good laughs and stuff. But uh, I can see between you know the three of you that you guys have like a really strong connection. You don't see that a lot with uh, like a lot of partner channels and stuff like that. So that, I think that's what os- honestly makes the league just such a, a great a great channel because you guys all have that connection where you guys are all practically like brothers. And, mm-hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah basically, basically we are. Basically, yeah, we are, <laughs> we really so, are brothers. Um, that that's awesome. Um, so, talking about uh, horror nights and, and horror in general, um, when was like the first year uh, you guys both went, or when you went and you went? Um, what was like your first year, and what was like the fondest memory that you have of going that first year? Oh, I talked a little bit, so maybe you go this time. Uh, I believe I was twenty ten. Uh, I'm always getting my years confused, but it was the year uh, I believe it was my bloody Valentine was there. Oh, nice. Um, but I, I was, again, I was introduced the same way I introduced Thomas. Is a buddy of mine who has, like, been going to uh, Horror Nights way longer than I had. He's like, dude, come on. And, uh, like, before then, I was just the biggest scaredy cat that, you know, I could think of. And I gave it a chance, and, you know, at first I thought it wasn't for me. I was like, ah, I, I just, I can't. Like, this, this, I was freaking out, like. Uh, that very first terror tram, I was like, I was really committed to just staying on the tram and just hoping they would take me back. And they were like, nope, get off the tram. Uh, and I remember going through the terror tram, and that's what sold it for me. Is I was like, okay, you know what, I'll give it a shot. And you know, I came back the next year, and I was like, it's got a lot of fun. Like this, this is so much fun. Yeah. And 
from there. Yeah. yeah. I, I think for me, the fondest memory of, uh, of 2013, um, I would have to say that, first of all, of course, it was the scare zone. I never had experienced something like that before. Uh, but Jurassic Park in the dark. I know that that's weird because that's like, that's not horror. But the fact, I never thought that, I never noticed that the song Welcome to the Jungle would go so well with that ride. And the fact that someone, someone must have had such a creative, like, ear to, to be able to associate that song with Jurassic Park. So I thought that was crazy. And now because of it, Every time we go to Halloween Horror Nights, even if we're only going there for like an hour or two, we have to do Jurassic Park in the Dark. Nice. Ironically, mm -hmm. I have actually never been on Jurassic Park in the Dark. What? Oh, you're I missing have, out? You're missing, I out. missing out. And it's not even my fault because every time I go, I want to get on it, but everyone mm -hmm. else I go with never wants to get on it because they don't want to get wet. And I'm just like... Then bring, let's bring extra clothes and then we'll change after. Let's just do it. Come on. I want to do it so bad, but... Well, I have a simple solution for you. Find a new group of friends. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I, I've seen it on YouTube, and yeah, the Welcome to the Jungle fits so perfect with, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Jurassic Park. Uh, it, it doesn't help that I'm a pretty big Guns N' Roses fan, but you know, I mean that. I mean that. That's what probably makes it. I mean, I would say any if you put any metal or punk song into something I enjoy, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna eat it up, honestly. Pretty much, um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, I would. I would say too. Like the first year I went was 2011, and that's when they were doing uh, Scream Four stuff. Um, yes. And that was uh, that was a decent year. And I, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I got in there. I had never been to Horror Nights. I had been to Knott's uh, 2008. Uh, mm -hmm. Here's a little bit of embarrassing and, and, and true story, but that was when I was in the sixth grade. Went to Knott's 2008 thinking I was so this tough guy. I got there and I got my I got scared. We left two hours later. That's <laughs> fine. Uh, that's fine. But uh, no, it, it was good. And then I finally was like, I got to redeem myself at Horror Nights. That's a step up and it's better. And we went to Horror Nights. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. And from then on, I was like, this is something that has to become a yearly tradition. Um, we had to go every year. Uh, the only maze I didn't go through that year, and I kind of regret it, was The Thing. Um, okay. But I'm mm -hmm. hoping this year we get The Thing, the, the better thing, at least in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I would say the fondest memory of, honestly, for me, with Horror Nights was walking in for the very first time in 2011, experiencing all this, and it's just like... It was just something else I've never seen and stuff. So, um, let's talk about uh, your guys' uh, your channel in general, though. Um, you guys, huh? you guys go from content to uh, horror nights to uh, lately. Um, one of my favorite things that I, I liked you guys put on the channel last week, um, and then another show I like. Um, but the thing that you and Mister E did uh, last oh, yeah. week, Mister E, uh, yeah. The thing that you guys did last week was the Leprechaun movie. That was by far one of the funniest videos I watched and I agree with everything you guys said in there because that movie is very <laughs> cringy and I, I, I can't believe sci-fi is making a, a sequel to that but who knows maybe, yep. maybe Leprechaun it'll be returns. Good. maybe it'll be good maybe not maybe it'll be cheesy again but uh I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the cringe count was just it was just it was mm -hmm. it was funny um I, I liked it what are your do, do you guys plan on maybe doing that for the future, maybe as a new a series, or was that kind of a one-time thing, or do you want to like do like a bunch of just like B horror movies, like? Um, so that was definitely an idea that that uh, Josue and I had um, last summer. Uh, we really were like this idea that you know uh, it was actually during uh, one of the live streams of uh, last summer that we we proposed the idea, where um, I forgot someone mentioned a horror movie that I had no idea what it was about and you knew entirely what it was about and i said i said on the live stream that um yeah i really am clueless about horror films so you know what we need to build a series where Josue takes me to all of these different horror movies we have like you know where we're watching it and then i can be like okay pause did that really just happen did that character really just strip down naked in the middle of a forest uh but something like that um and so we wanted to do like a, a pilot episode um, with uh, Mystery and myself uh, doing Leprechaun just in time for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I think that format was was good. It was a good way to start. 
Uh, it seems like the feedback is pretty good from from our viewers. We definitely will will tweak it a little bit. I think because um, we really want to make it. Yes, we want to make it real, but we also want to make it not as long. Because I mean, that video was like what 17 minutes long. That's a pretty pretty long video. But having something that um, and maybe some more aspects on the cringe count right the counter what are some of the punishments if a movie has like you know 15 a score of 15 as opposed to a score of five what does that mean so that's something that we're still working on the kinks but that's definitely something i would, I would love to make a permanent series for the channel i mean i was i was just laughing and enjoying it it, it was really a, it was a good solid video and oh, thank I, you i was just uh i had waken up that morning and i and i saw that you posted that and i was just I was dying because I, I, I literally, like I said, I totally agree with Leprechaun. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't know how that, that made, got made into a, a horror movie and then a franchise. And then, <laughs> that, I, but, yeah, my, my thing is how did that become a franchise yeah, with like, like seven, seven movies in total? Yeah. I, <laughs> um, and the, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. They, I guess they were just trying to milk the money out of it. They thought maybe they did so good. Good old Hollywood. Yeah. Good old Hollywood. Um, another thing that I, I like that you guys did on the channel recently is you made the monthly scream into the weekly scream. Now, uh, yes, um, I do like that a lot because um, I do get much like you, Josue. I get my news off bloody disgusting. Yeah. Um, every week, I, I just retweet all the the things we're going to talk about on the podcast, and I'll write it out so it's just easy mm -hmm. for us to look at. I do like it now, though, that you do the weekly screen because if there's something that I didn't get um, that you got on the thing, um, it's cool to, to pull that news and use you as a resource um, for, yeah. for, for news because, um, I, you know, it, it's always good to – it's interesting to talk about stuff like that on the podcast. So that's one of the things I, I look forward to every week too, every Friday is because I get to uh, not only pull my resources from Bloody Disgusting but also pull my resources from – um, your video, of course. Every every week, I give full credit to where credits do. Um, right. And so yeah, like I appreciate that a lot. I mean, it's cool. But uh, what just made you like? I know you were gonna do monthly. Was uh, was monthly just like way too much? And did you just kind of want to do it weekly because there's so much news on a weekly basis that you just kind of want to just pop it out weekly? Yeah. So uh, I originally started off with monthly because we had this idea that we were going to have a weekly video. That was going to cycle between me one week, Thomas one week, and then Mr. E another week. And we were still trying to work that out. Mm. And I was thinking, well, I, I would sit there uh, doing the monthly stream and I'd be like, okay, I have to, like, I would see something on, like, Bloody Disgusting or on Twitter and something like that. And I'd be like, okay, I want to bring that in. But this would be early in the week or early in the month. So then when it came time to film my video, I'd be like, ah, oh, I, I, I totally forgot that thing that I wanted to bring up. And then it, it was just gone. So I decided, well, I'm not really doing much, like, uh, at home-wise. So I was like, other than work and stuff like that, I'm like, I really want to push my, like, work and content and stuff like that and just push myself in general because I, I, I want to just, you know, keep popping out content for the league. So I was like, well, I'm just going to turn the monthly screen into the weekly screen. And so for a while I was, like, debating, well, you know, how's this going to fit into my life and stuff like that because obviously it does take – you know, a while to you know find all these articles and stuff like that, read them and you know whatnot and stuff like that, and then form it into a video. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like the weekly stream was just kind of kind of a no-brainer, and you know I'm just really happy that I did it. Oh yeah, like I said, it's one of the resources that I look at every week to add news onto the podcast, and so I really appreciate that. Um, and like I said, I love where the channel's going. You, oh, thank you you got me as a subscriber and I'll watch every video that you guys post up. So <laughs> thank you. Um, oh yeah. So uh, we're gonna move on now. Um, we had an amazing T uh, TLAV Q and A, and that that was uh, something that I, I was just for the longest wanted just questions I wanted to ask you guys and stuff. <laughs> sure. sure. Uh, we're gonna move on now. So we've been getting a lot of uh, Horror Nights updates for this year. This this yes, year. Yeah. Um, you know, Murdy's been tweeting. Uh, and he just got confirmed that he will be at uh, Monster Palooza and Midsummer Scream. Um, let me start off by saying I gotta respect the guy from going from Ireland to oh, yeah. Here, absolutely back and forth. The mm -hmm. jet lag on that just must be insane. Okay. Um, are you guys gonna be at the Monster Palooza panel that he does? Uh, I think it's Sunday that he's doing. Yes, it's Sunday. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Sunday, April fifteenth. Yeah. 
Um, what do you guys take some speculations? What do you think? You think he'll do a major announcement for this year? Uh, I think definitely based off of what had been done uh, Midsummer Scream last year, I think we are going to get a maze announcement that week. And he'll he'll elaborate a little bit on Twitter, but then I think really the the source of where he's going to really talk about um, like step by step what he's thinking will be in Monster Palooza. So I think there will be that announcement the week before. Because he also mentioned that there's going to be like a, a trivia game where someone can win a game behind the scenes look. So I think that's why he'll announce the property. Then we have like a week uh, to learn everything there is about that movie for the trivia questions. And then he'll be like, all right, let's talk about, you know, the property. Yeah. Um, the thing that interests me a lot too is uh, I think last on one of the, the Horror Nights Reddits, um, they were saying that the timing for all of this is kind of this week it's not or this year it's not how, how it was last year as far as announcing and, and and ticket sales and dates and all that um i think it's like off by like a couple weeks and stuff like that i don't know if you guys seen that yet they they had like a they had like the the whole of what happened last year when everything got announced and then they compared it to this year how it kind of had not matched up and stuff like that but um He's saying a lot of people are also speculating that this might be Murdy's last year. What do you guys think oh, yeah. of that? Um, I, I definitely I feel like the the big push that he did with moving to Ireland is definitely just a big hint that you know he's he's thinking about quitting. I I for one am a strong believer that this might be his last year. Um, you know he's he's done such a great job all these past few years, and you know I feel like the man deserves it. Like. You know, like obviously he's he's got family over there and whatnot. So I, I, I I'm a strong believer of you know family first. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. For me, it was um, I I think we're actually on borrowed time because I really felt last year was his last year um, because of how chaotic it was in the behind the scenes, <laughs> uh, especially with uh, like even with the announcements. We're like, what's going on? Why? We clearly see that this house is insidious. It was the first one done. Yeah. What's the problem? Why aren't we hearing about this, right? Um, I definitely think uh, a big hint that this is his last year is the rumor, specifying that this is rumor, <laughs> uh, that there's going to be a classic monsters mashup similar to life with the House of Horrors that we had. Um Many, many times John Murdy has been interviewed and he has said that going out with a bang, that would be his last maze that he would want to do. To indicate that that's his last year would be to have a compilation of all these classic Universal monsters. So, yeah, I'm getting choked up. So, <laughs> if this does happen, then um, I think it is safe to say that it is his last year. Because, I mean... His daughters are getting older now. They're they're you know they're they're starting school in Ireland. Uh, he's he's tweeted about how much he misses them. Even on Facebook, he's he's written uh, massive posts to them saying how he'll be home soon. And I think that that's that's a big strong indication that this is you know the end of an era. How about this? Yeah, the, the end, end of an era. My my big thing too is like if if he does retire this year, I just hope they get someone as good, if not better, than Murdy. I mean that's that's kind of hard to do. Murdy has mm -hmm. gave us a lot of years doing Horror Nights, and he's done a phenomenal job. Um, and I know last year a lot of people would kind of disagree because a lot of the black walls and stuff and and stuff like that. But if you if you really take it on a, on an extent of the whole you know the makeup and stuff like that i mean this is one of the only horror events that i know i mean as far as like big major events that actually do a really good job you know you go to knots and and you go to like i don't know i've never been to the six flags one i can't really say too much on that but uh if you go like to knots and stuff they they don't put as much effort as horror nights does now don't get me wrong i i love not scary for i'm not not really you know i'm not not saying they're 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 horrible i'm just saying that you don't see as much um, effort as Murdy does uh, with this event. Um, it will be sad to see him go if this is his last year. 
Um, mm-hmm. I would like them to kind of, if it is his last year, promote it like the farewell tour kind of thing of John Murray. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, going out with the going out with one last scare. That'd be really. He, cool. he should be our icon this year. Oh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> like he should be like a what is it? Uh, at a, like a circus at like one of those. Uh, yes, the ringleader. Ring, ring, there you go. Um, <laughs> he should be one of those, and you know, mm-hmm. in the promotional, he should have, of course, the top hat. Um, oh, that'd be amazing. Because I remember last year we we ran into him. Uh, we went opening night last year. We ran into mm-hmm. him. He was actually walking in. We got like super lucky. I don't know how we got this. I night. was super jealous. So yeah, you you tweeted it at us. I remember that. And we were we were in the food court. Of yes, City just Walk, passed by. We were just, just like passed dang. by. And you were down there with him. That was that was definitely something we were jealous about. <laughs> yeah, I. You know what? We we were at the comic book store, and I told my cousins like, "Look, you want to go eat?" And we, we walked to Johnny Rockets. Uh, mm-hmm. That's one of our traditions every year. We go to Johnny Rockets, and just happened to walk by us, and he was going in, and I was like, "Oh my god, dude! This is this is an opportunity. We have to take it." There you go. And, Absolutely. Uh, so that was cool, um, but I don't know if you guys saw the way he dresses opening night. It, it, he's got his like uh, his long coat. He's got a cane. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got yeah. his, his infamous hat he always wears, um, and it'd be cool instead of his hat. It's like a, a top hat and stuff like that. But um, like I said, it's just gonna be sad to see him go because the, the man's given us so much amazing properties, brought a, brought our brought our nightmares to life practically, and, yeah. and, and for for that to say goodbye, I, I would say he, this would probably be if this is his last year, probably gonna be the best lineup yet. Um, and there's a lot of so. there's a leaked lineup already out. I know you guys yeah. covered it. We I haven't mm-hmm. really covered it too much. Um, but I don't I don't know. What do you guys think about this leaked lineup? I mean, last year's was pretty accurate. Um, mm-hmm. with um, the like two I, mazes, I think. Yeah. If um, first of all, disclaimer: <laughs> this is all rumors, yes. right? Yes. What we're talking about this isn't a for sure thing. So you know. Mm-hmm. Inside don't Universal Community, don't come at us. Uh, just fans <laughs> passing down the news. Exactly. And I think if this, if if the leaked lineup is 100% accurate, I think it's going to be kind of underwhelming. I think. I think it's going to be one hell of a year. If I think maybe it's because um, there's some of the properties I don't see how they'll do it. Right. I think like if if Stranger Things, for example, I think. There's a lot of great scenes about Stranger Things, but what will it really hold the essence of Stranger Things, right? Because like the whole thing is that Stranger Things, it really is, you know, Goonies meets Aliens, right? It's it's this uh, the story of the kids trying to figure out these characters. Like even the name, the Demogorgon, comes from Dungeons and Dragons, right? And that's really what the, the the essence of the show is. That it's it's these kids who are trying to figure out that they're now in a supernatural world, right? How would they translate that into a maze other than just giving us a series of, of jump scares of the Demogorgons, the Demodogs, um, maybe give us uh, the Shadow Monster? I, I mean, go, going off of what you said and just what, well, like just stuff that's popping into my head, uh, like it doesn't necessarily have to focus on like the, the Demogorgons. Like for <laughs> one, we have all the like... I'm just gonna call them like the men in black, like the government. Oh yeah. <laughs> like they, they are obviously gonna be like you know carrying weapons, and they're gonna be like, hey, you know too much, or something like that. Or even like um, Billy, who was supposed to be in season two, is a, a the human villain. Uh, the, the, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I forget what their names are. The, the writer or the creators of Stranger Things. Oh, the the uh, Duffer Brothers. The Duffer Brothers. They were they were like, well, we wanted the supernatural villain, which was the in season two, the Mind Flayer. Like yes, that. yes, yes. Um, yeah. But they also wanted a human villain, which manifested in in Billy. Mm-hmm. So I could see Billy like even popping out yeah. of the scene, like trying to like you know hit us with a bat or something mm-hmm. like that. So there, I, I feel like there's definitely ways that they could go about doing this. And I feel like especially when it comes to like John Murdy and stuff like that, and like Mike Ayala and all of them, and everybody that works on like this product. I feel like when they like all heads come together, they'd be able to make something. Good. I think it's just mainly I'm also um, 
hurt. <laughs> I think I could say from The Shining because I love, I love The Shining. You know I love The Shining. I, I know think, you love The Shining. I think that definitely is is the epitome of a of a well structured horror movie. The fact that it is not jump scare based the fact that it builds over time Tension. and every time you see it you learn something new about the about the characters yeah. and one of the scenes that i wanted to really see was <laughs> was the blood and the elevator doors and i think that that was the most heartbreaking thing especially when we're hearing about the shining especially hearing from john murdy himself that this was going to be highly detailed maze and that we were there's going to be you know even the carpet was going to reflect the movie and yeah. i understand that the budget was really thrown to getting the properties themselves um but it, i'm just so stranger things hold such a close <laughs> such a dear part of my heart uh, I love that show and i would hate i would hate to get my hopes up and then not feel fully satisfied. And I think that's a struggle, right? That's a struggle yeah. that, that John Murdy has always had, and I think that's a struggle that anybody who, who's going to be in charge of the horror event will have, is that how do you find this balance between audience expectation and limits? And limits, financial limitations. So, Yeah, I, I would totally agree. Um, it's funny that you actually bring up The Shining. Uh, mm -hmm. Not going to lie, besides the, the screen's... Uh, that they did, which I, I that was about the only thing I didn't like of the maze. That was actually probably my favorite maze last year. And, I think that yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys saw Florida's version of it, but it was way better than ours as far as maze wise. Now makeup wise, I will not agree that yeah, it was pretty bad, especially with Jack. Uh, I, I don't know it's what like they were prosthetic doing. forehead. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> It was um, ridiculous. The one thing I did like that they had though was I, I now I don't know how they they mastered this effect either it was actual twins or it was one girl and she was next to a mirror but they had what looked like actual twins, um, and and that was I think that's what made that made that maze more authentic over there. Um, but you bring up Stranger Things and um, yeah I'm kind of with you on that I don't want them to to bring in that property and then focus only on the Demogorgons as a jump scare every... Yeah. But at the same time, I'm very excited to see what they can introduce to this property. Um, now, I know we've seen multiple seasons in a property before, that being American Horror Story. Um, we've seen three seasons in that. He said that was actually really hard to do because he had to watch every episode of those three seasons um, over and over again. And that honestly, that's time-consuming right there. Those are like an hour long. There's 13 episodes. Um mm -hmm. And with Stranger Things, it's like eight episodes long. Uh, they're also an hour long. And he'd have to time consume. He had to kind of Frankenstein of what parts would be the best going into this maze. What should we see inside the maze? Um, what what would be the facade, honestly? Um, That's a big uh, one, yeah. Yeah, the facade is honestly like your first reaction going into the maze. Sets up the whole kind of transporting you into their universe. Pretty true. Mm -hmm. whole, the whole thing. Um Oh. He would have maybe to, it would be like Hawkins Lab. Maybe yeah, it would just be, thinking. but I feel or, like or Will's house, or Will's house, or maybe even uh, the arcade from the second season, since that was like that's really what started uh, Will's transition into becoming uh, uh, the spy, right? Um, so yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. I would say another good facade because I had really started thinking about this when I heard that this was part of the league lineup. Um, mm -hmm. One of my, I, I hope this would be a, a really good facade. Well, I think it would, but um, in the upside down, when they show the school and it's covered with vines and all that oh, black stuff, yeah. and it's got that like cool. gloomy, gory effect. Like the, the way if they put the right lighting on it mm -hmm. and <laughs> make it look all cool and stuff, like it's like you're entering the upside down and you go into that Stranger Things universe. I think that'd be great. I just, I just think it would be phenomenal and stuff like that. Um, 
But see, if they didn't do that now, now you yourself would be upset, right? <laughs> a little, a little, but I would still, honestly, I wouldn't miss out on the maze. Um, no, of course not. Of no, course, yeah. Of course not. I, I, I mean, I, we went through The Shining God knows how many times. Every single time we went, yeah. <laughs> and, we, and we always complained about it, but at the end we were all just like, where's the caretaker? Where's the caretaker? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny that we bring up this facade thing because I remember one of your videos when you guys were doing construction updates. One of the things that got me laughing so hard is when you guys saw – you finally saw what the facade was going to look like for American Horror Story. Oh, yes. And then you put that audio track of you being genuinely disappointed about it. <laughs> and I just started dying when I heard that. And um, honestly, I, I feel that maybe uh, – what could have been a good facade for last year's American Horror Story, honestly, could have been the house yeah. For, yeah. For, from that season. Um, being said that that wasn't the best season, um, honestly, I didn't really enjoy it. Um, I would say I hope that this year, the, the, the lineup right now this year is they're going to do Asylum. Um, I can't say, honestly, I've seen that season. I, the only seasons I've seen is one, season. four, five, six, and seven. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, definitely check out. Um, I would say you can skip Asylum. No, I'm kidding. What? <laughs> uh, I, I think um, definitely Murder House has. I mean, that's the first one, so that yeah. really was the the standard. Murder House. And I think there's there's some scary things about about Murder House. Uh, I mean, they they it's recreate the they recreate Sandy Hook, and that is just terrifying. Yeah. Uh, because that's that's something that's based on on really? you know actual events, and um, I think after Murder House, they kind of took it in a more supernatural aspect. I mean, that this I think that's why I love Asylum so much, yeah. and why I'm so excited. If this were an actual or like what what we're speculating is this maze coming this year, is because not only do you have aliens in Asylum. You've got Nazis in Asylum. Mm-hmm. You've got witches in Asylum. You, It's just a cluster of just, you know what, let's just put this all together, put it in one big building, and see what happens. And for me, it's it's like the best season. You can definitely skip three, though. <laughs> is Coven, is it not good? I haven't watched Coven. All, right. all you AHS fans, you can calm down before. <laughs> I, all right, I know, I know what all you're about to say, but honestly, for me... Coven is the least American horror story. These comments are about to be. <laughs> These comments, you're about to get a lot of comments. But for me, American horror story is really horrific, right? And uh, apart <laughs> apart from some scenes in American horror story, because it is based on on uh, this uh, this coven. There's actually two rival covens. One is a group of. Um, voodoo um practitioners uh who apparently are immortal as well so that's that's kind of cool uh but so there are graphic scenes right when they do these these rituals there's also a test that's what i think really gets for me that it doesn't become american horror story because the last two episodes are based on this test to become the um i think it's the Supreme? Yeah, I think it's The Supreme is what it's called. It's uh, I, was, chicken, I was thinking Mother Supreme. Supreme, but Mother Supreme, that's... that's it's the Chicken Supreme it's a, Taco Bell. It's the Chicken Supreme Taco. <laughs> but so, so be, to be uh, The Supreme, you have to do these seven tasks. And these seven tasks are very, very much yawn. I think they're cool, right? They're they're yeah. cool if you're if you're like into wizardry, and I am, right? I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. No, you're just hating because uh, you don't know magic. I, yeah, that's the reason that's why you don't it, like it. I think it's from the reason why I'm hating it is because the the, <laughs> the actress I forget her name. I had a total crush on her when I was watching, and she dies immediately. Kathy and I'm like, Bates. what the what? She was supposed to be the supreme. Um, <laughs> Kathy Bates. No. <laughs> hey, Kathy Bates was amazing in, in Colt. Yeah, not Colt. So she wasn't in Colt. Uh, Roanoke. That, I think she did a great performance in She did a really Roanoke. good job in Roanoke, yeah. Yes. Um, but you can definitely skip Coven. Coven, yeah. Uh, you know, I thought about going back and watching those two seasons too, but um, mm-hmm. I'm hoping, honestly, because I, I, I watched Colt, and this was one of my favorite seasons uh, since a long time. Uh, Colt was very, very good, yes. Because I, I really liked, uh, before Colt, I really liked Hotel a lot. And that's because 
Just Lady Gaga. I think yeah, yeah Lady exactly. Gaga. <laughs> That's exactly why I liked it so much. Um, my my favorite has to be Freak Show. Uh, that was actually the first season uh, that I saw with Mr. E. Uh, I think that's what really uh, the thing about American Horror Story is that it's you can hate a character at the beginning, but at the end when they die, you just feel so bad Spoiler. for them. Spoiler, right? But that's that's pretty much all of American Horror no, Story. I'll, I'll agree with you on that because and and I I brought this up with coworkers. Mm-hmm. With and I know some of my coworkers watch this and just watch anything that we do. Mm-hmm. Is shout out to them, <laughs> Addie from from uh, Murder House uh-huh. gets. In a hit and run, and we're never told who hit, who hit her, right? <laughs> there was no police investigation whatsoever, and I think that's just lazy writing that they didn't tie up who this murder is. And unless they're gonna bring it up in this like crossover, oh, crossover thing, yeah. where like the guy who hit her, like I think that's what frustrates me about Murder House is mm-hmm. literally that one thing because I hated Addy at the beginning, the whole you're gonna regret it thing. You know? <laughs> But when it came down to it, like, when she's like, I just want to be a pretty girl. Like, I felt that. Because yeah. I want to be a pretty girl, too. You know what I'm saying? We, don't we all? <laughs> yep. And so when she died, I was like, well, they got to explain this. And they did it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. never went to it. Um, yeah. And that's when I bring in with Colt. I, I, I absolutely love this season. Um, it was heavily, uh, you know, uh, the influence behind this was heavily behind um, obviously, the clown craze that was going on last year or the year before. Um, 15. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, it was a major influence behind the, the political um, election last year with mm-hmm. the whole thing with Trump and everything. That was a huge influence on this uh, season. Um, and I started really paying attention this season because I, w- I really wanted to see this season as a maze. Um, yeah. My only issue is... Um, I don't know if Murdy will do it, but one of the the clown's masks has long old dildos on it. Um, that might be a maybe a no no for Horror Nights. I I don't. Yeah. Know. One thing that Jose and I are will always be upset about when it came to Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, we were huge fans of From Dust. Yes. Oh, I knew what you were talking about. <laughs> and in the setting, uh, just like in the original <laughs> movie with George Clooney and Quentin Tarantino. It's called the Titty Twister. Yes, but you know, and it yeah. has the neon sign with what, with what, a what woman with get? a breast. What did we get? Instead, we got the Twister. twister. Yeah, and so that was yep. that was, was like it a nightclub. Yeah, it was I just was a... just as pissed off as you guys because Ugh. you know what? I'm not gonna lie. I enjoyed the show. Um, because Robert Rodriguez did it. Um, yes. Obviously, Maybe. the only thing that disappointed me was you didn't have Clooney or Tarantino reprising the roles, but they're kind of at this t- at this time and age. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, it, it wouldn't be the same. Uh, George Clooney's character. What's up? Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, George Clooney's character in the the movie is just so awesome. I love his whole character, the tattoos and everything. It, it's so badass. Um, Tarantino's a weirdo. He's a weirdo. And I love him. I, I love, love Tarantino. The man. I, I've seen every one of his movies. I love him. My only thing, though, I, I've brought this up before. He just mm-hmm. he just has this weird obsession with feet. I don't know if you guys know yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. There's that's why I made it a joke in um in the Leprechaun. <laughs> Tarantino? Tarantino? Quentin Tarantino. But you know what? And, and this is just this is just me speaking. You know what? Let the man do it. If, if that's oh, what he's into, yeah. you know, by all means, go for it. You know, we've but, all got skeletons in the closet. Uh-huh. Feet are his. I, I have to say though, the facade for that maze was phenomenal. That was a really mm-hmm. cool facade, minus the, the titty twister part. Um, but yeah, that was just, I think that was an honest to God, really well put together facade. Oh yeah. Um, the maze wasn't too bad either. There was a lot of aspects they brought to the, from the show to life. Um, and I liked that a lot. Um, they, they could have added some more scenes that I wanted to see in there. Um, they didn't have, obviously, um, I want to say 
Oh wait, no, they didn't even do season two. What am I saying? Uh, I thought they did season. Did they do season two? I don't know if they no, did. No, they didn't do season two. Season. Yeah, they just did the first season. So never mind. They they pretty much got all the good parts spot on. Season two came out after. Oh no, it was coming out during. Was during it? horror? Yeah, because I think yeah, they were promoting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's why it was it was promoting this the second season. So yeah. it was just a well put together maze. I wish they would go back and just do the movie. Um, but at yeah, the same, at the same time, <laughs> I guess you can kind of say it's almost similar, same thing. Yeah, I think a lot of the scenes that we see, like um, was I mean, it's almost shot for shot with uh, with uh, um, Santanico. Pandemonium, uh, when she has the uh, the snake and she's like doing her dancing. Sure, we don't see the uh, Quentin Tarantino drinking from yeah. Selma Hayek's foot. So, I mean, if you want to see that, maybe they you could the do it. Yeah. There you go. Maybe they'll do uh, the the maze with that scene because it is kind of creepy, right? That's what Horror Nights is about. It like shows creepy scenes. I need more Kahuna Burger if they if they bring it back. Kahuna yes, Burger. Kahuna Burger. Yes, but I, I think that um, yeah, that was that was a good maze. I think uh, American Horror Story, if that is, see, let's let's bring it back, right? Yeah, <laughs> full circle. <laughs> um, I think what the league lineup, what I think is wrong about it being just Asylum, is like what I mentioned in our in our video when we're covering it, is um, that why would it only be one maze? I think Roanoke was great last year, um, but I think because of how next year. Uh, this year it's going to be space, or not space, but a future theme. But next year we're going to get a murder house coven crossover. So may or no? Why don't yes. I always? Is it yes? Murder it's house, house coven. coven. Okay, good. But so I think what we would have to do is we would have to see. There we go. That's that's where my train thought was going. That we would have to see asylum, coven, and cult. We'd have to see those yeah. represented in a maze because Orlando's already had that, right? They had that last year. They had, um, they had, Coven, Roanoke, and Asylum. Asylum, As yeah, yeah, As yeah. So they already had that, so they're good. We were kind of behind now because yeah. we only had Roanoke. <laughs> so that might be so. the kind of switcheroo that we get is we'll probably. Murdy said it was hard for him to do that. Um, I'm right, gonna... but he also said that it was really based on like the Halloween episodes, right? Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think those um, seasons have really good Halloween episodes. So I'd be okay if it's only representing those three episodes, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I would honestly love to see Asylum, Coven, and Colt. I would really honestly love to see Colt on its own separate maze, but if he does the three, I'm not going to complain because I thought the first American Horror Story maze was amazing. Um... We'll see though. Only time will tell. I mean, the, you know, uh, well, it's you know, got some time it was so good. Gets announced. Um, I could talk Horror Nights all day with you guys, honestly. <laughs> yes, we have. We have been talking. Uh, so I'm gonna just uh, move it on right here okay, sure. to some bad acting. Mm -hmm. We come across horror movies, uh, and they don't have the greatest acting usually. Um, some horror movies do. Some horror movies don't. I found this one this week, um, and I don't know why I didn't do it before, but this week's bad horror movie acting is actually a classic, um, mm -hmm. an Alfred Hitchcock classic, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Psycho, and it's the scene where uh, you know the man walks into his house and is kind of investigating, goes up the stairs, and uh, Norman Bates comes out with the knife, dressed as his mom, and stabs the guy. And just the way he falls down the stairs, just, I don't know, you guys tell me. Well, okay, so... So yes, that scene, that's the one. I absolutely love that scene because that is Alfred Hitchcock at his worst doing practical <laughs> effects. So what happened was they they had the they had the the setup for um, to actually have um, a, a stunt double fall down the steps. Yeah. Uh, but I think what happened was that the stunt double was unavailable for some reason that day. So they actually had to do a, a reshoot, and that is a screen, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. He, he's just like this, and it's the screen coming forward uh, to to show that the uh, – I think, I think he's the um, – he's, he's the detective, right? Because I think it's, yeah. he, he was being called by – I forget her name. 
the woman who dies in the shower. Swan? Is that, is that I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. It's been a while. And so I think that is the most amazing scene. <laughs> and that, and I wish that scene was more no, iconic. No the disrespect to um, Hitchcock. <laughs> I love anything Hitchcock. Um, that guy is a whore genius. Mm-hmm. I don't know, though. Just his face reaction. Though, I don't... I don't think I would make that reaction if I fell down the stairs. I, I, don't, I don't know what reaction I would really make. I think if I were to fall down the stairs, my first reaction would be like, I think I broke something. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love that movie. Um, it's, it's a fantastic <laughs> movie. Just that, just his face though bothers me for some reason. I don't yeah. know what it is. I mean, I'll agree, dude. Like, uh, for me, it's, it's the super fact that cheesy. Oh yeah, and like I, I know that. Yeah, I mean, I love it. It's super cheesy. But it's just like, come on. <laughs> for, for me, the fact is that he's stabbed, right? Like we clearly see Norman stab him. Stab, stab, stab. But it's when he's falling, it's just like a cut across his face, yeah. It's just like a cut across his face. It's not actually like a stab wound, so it's like, okay, all right. Made I, of metal. I tell George this every week, too, uh, when we do this, that he has it easy with the horror movie death because I sometimes have to watch these movies in order to find them. I can't literally go on YouTube and look up bad horror movie acting because then I just sure. get stuff. So I, some throughout the week, I'll do my research and try to find something bad. Lately, uh, since I got time off now, I'm going to start watching a lot of uh, horror movies just to kind of catch up and stuff. So maybe I'll find something. I don't know. Um, Trolls. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to give you that. Trolls. Trolls, oh, yeah. yeah. Trolls 2, I think, is... Is it Trolls or is it Goblins? I don't I don't know. Some mystical creature. It's. Uh, I think... I think um, uh, Xander told you about it. The They're eating her and then they're going to eat me. Oh, my oh. God. Yep, I'd that actually... Classic. I want to say I did that for my first bad horror movie acting. That was, that's what started it all because that's what I was like. Okay, this has to be a segment on the podcast because <laughs> this guy's not the only one that has the worst horror movie acting. No, there, there's plenty of them out there. I I think another good one you should look at. Um, what's the Rob Zombie movie? Is a, a thousand something. House of a Thousand Corpses. House of a Thousand Corpses. Watch that. Rain Wilson, before he was Dwight Schrute, yeah. is in that movie. His death is so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> it's that you bring that up, Thomas, because actually I was watching that last night. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. There you go. I know what you're talking about. He's just kind of laying there like, oh! Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's going on, dude? And then this so guy, this that guy one. later on becomes Dwight Schrute, one of the funniest <laughs> characters in sitcom. The Office. Yeah. Um, all right. So I gotta definitely look into that one for next week. Mm-hmm. That's for sure probably gonna be one. So let's move on. I don't know if you guys watch uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Um, nope. Every, um, <laughs> somewhat. Every now and then, uh, it kind of makes me happy when I can cross comic books over with horror. Um, mm-hmm. And this is kind of exciting. So for season four, uh, Matt Ryan, the guy who uh, infamously made Constantine just he brought that character to life he is going to be a series regular for season four um i'm actually really excited about this because they gave him his own show um it went on for one season phenomenal show don't know why they canceled it. i think because it was on a friday tv slot and that really made me mad when they canceled it because it was just honestly they brought that comic book to life and i loved uh constantine uh but he fought to keep that character going because he really liked playing the character. So then they brought him back for an animated Justice League Dark movie, which was really yep. good. Justice that, League Dark. That was that was really good. Um, on top of that, you had Batman in it, so you can't go wrong with Batman. Um, <laughs> and then uh, they said they were going to give him his own animated series, um, which today at WonderCon they did screen the first episode. Um, oh, okay. I didn't hear about that. So, yeah. Um, that's going to be on CW Seed, though. That's their, like, animated kind of... Um, really, you have to download the app. You have to download the app just to watch uh, it. Uh, okay. It's one of those okay. kind of things. So, uh, they got that going. And then now, he came on Legends a couple of times as, a like, a cameo. And he was on Arrow a couple mm-hmm. of times. I think once or twice. Um, and now he's going to be a season regular. That kind of gets me kind of going now because I am catching up with Legends at, at the moment. But that makes me wonder, are they going to be experimenting more with um, 
more like a, a, a demon supernatural side going into this next season um, if they're bringing in Constantine because Constantine's expertise are usually involved with the, the dark arts and, mm -hmm. and you know uh, possession and all that so um, I don't know what do you guys think I mean you know I'll say our, I'm hoping um, and I'm not too familiar with Constantine myself I'm, I'm not I was never really like a big DC guy but I mean, some of the things that I did read uh, were Jonah Hex comics, Jonah and Hex. so when he came in, and they were like, "Yes, he's getting a whole season," you know, when they go back to the Wild West, and they, you know, they just, they just gotta chill with Jonah Hex. I was like, "Yes, give me more of Jonah Hex," and I was a little granted. I, yes, I was a little disappointed that you know it was it wasn't as much as I thought we would get, and I mean. The prosthetic, or like the makeup that they did for the guy, I thought was just spot on. It was good. And the, it was really good. The actor himself, I love the just total badass. Just, Jonah Hex. <laughs> I always like it too when they go, what do you, what's that on your face? And he, <laughs> he'll kill a guy and be like, what are you talking about? Yes. And yes, then, no, that's always like a good comic relief. What do you um, mean? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, and that's funny you bring up Jonah Hex. Um, that that character on Legends was 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 a good thing and I and I was hoping they were gonna make him a series regular as well because yeah. it gives and lately a lot of comic book companies have been doing this, but it gives the opportunity to bring characters that did that had a run back in like the sixties, seventies, eighties. They were yes. kinda nobody characters compared to like Batman, Superman, Spider Man, you know. They were nobody characters, but now they're bringing up these characters again and they're making them main priority characters and they're making them way more way more badass and stuff like that. And they did that with Jonah Hex. Um, as you know, that movie didn't do too well in the box office. Nope. Um, I, I, I somewhat enjoyed it, honestly, I'm not going to lie. But for them bringing him onto Legends, that was a smart move to kind of bring that, introduce that character again, hopefully get the fans saying, like, yeah, we want to see more of him. Uh, right. And then, you know, Marvel did the same thing on uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. with Ghost Rider. Yeah. That, um, I will be honest got me back into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I watched the whole first season. Um, I started watching some of the second season, started losing interest, and then I found out Ghost Rider was coming back. I was like, all right, I'm watching it again. You got me, yeah. you got me caught. Yeah. <laughs> you got me caught. Um, regardless, it wasn't Johnny Blaze, but I didn't care because right. Ghost Rider in general was just such a badass character. Um, but a as far as Constantine goes, like I said, I want to know if maybe – I'm assuming this, they're going to go more of a supernatural aspect with this next season because, like I said, Constantine, I, I don't see, I mean, he could fight and stuff, yeah, but, and he knows uh, a black, you know, black magic and all that, but as far as what he can really do, it's mostly, his expertise are mostly just demon possession and stuff like that, you know, so. Right. Only time will tell. Maybe we'll see. Hopefully, Comic Con, they'll, they'll give us more of a, a, a details of what his character is is going to be in this season. Um, yeah. Who knows? Uh, if anything, he'll be the Scarlet Witch to their to their Avengers. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Scarlet Witch. Uh, that was actually another character that was I was interested when they brought her into Age of Ultron. I was like, well, this is Magneto's kid. Why are you... Right. Why are you here? Mm -hmm. We don't even got Magneto Go in the universe yet. So. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Hopefully. Um... This is some news that I, I love talking about. This is going to probably be a weekly thing like we did with Halloween, but Three from Hell. Yes. It's, it's happening. Uh, oh. We got some, some new cast news this week. Um, I think they announced like three cast members joined uh, the thing, uh, you know, the, the movie itself. And let me pull up my uh, Twitter right here. Um, so Jeff Daniel Phillips joined Jeff the cast. Um I I'm really bad with names. <laughs> I, would, I would have to see some stuff that he's been in. Maybe I actually know mm -hmm. the actor. Um, and then I, have I, I believe the the mom from E.T. is in this movie. Is, it, oh. is in Three from Hell. Three from oh, Hell. wow. Let me see. Yeah, because um, I, I, I was reading a lot about this this week because I wanted to. Yeah, you're right. Uh, D. Wallace. That's her name. Yes. The legendary D. Wallace joined uh, 3 mm -hmm. And I, I got news that one other... Oh, um, last week I talked about it. Um, the Assault on Precinct 13 star, uh, Austin Stoker's on the on this movie too. And I think they released of what his role's going to be more in this movie. 
Um, I think he's supposed to be. Uh, I think he's supposed to be uh, like a cop or something. Or, or no, he's gonna be a news reporter. There we go. <laughs> I, I don't know why I said cop. That's way off. But yeah, he's gonna be a news reporter in the movie. So he's probably gonna report that uh, the Devil's Rejects maybe escaped this. Um, uh, shoot out or they're shoot, back yeah uh mm-hmm. because there was a picture that they released on or rob zombie has been releasing a lot of stuff from this mm. uh, follow him on instagram if you guys want to keep up with uh three from hell um but rob zombie released a photo like last week or two weeks ago of um uh what is it a, a jail truck to transport prisoners oh and so um the truck you know, I think it said the, the prison name and everything. Um, my whole thing was I thought they died. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And so um, either they didn't exactly hit them in areas where it was instant death or these guys I mean, are so into cult stuff that they – I don't know. <laughs> well, because – and I have to go back and rewatch The Devil's Rejects, but – I'm like ninety percent sure baby got shot in the head. You know what? Uh, I gotta go back and watch it too. That's why I actually started watching House of a Thousand Corpses because I wanted to watch yeah. it and then go into Devil's Rejects, kind of get myself. I was gonna probably do maybe a Rob Zombie marathon just to get myself hyped up. Like I can see Captain Spaulding surviving. He got a bunch of like chest shots, but you know, nowadays like it, it seems like in every horror movie anybody can survive a chest shot. So yeah. Um, now, it's funny that you bring that up. Uh, I was going to bring this up later on in the podcast, but since we're talking about it now, I might as well bring it up. Whoops. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. It, it doesn't, it's okay because it's all three from hell. So, I mean, I might as well okay. just put it together and, and you know, we get it out of the way. But uh, Blade Disgusting released an article this week of uh, two kick-ass ways the Devil's Rejects could be brought back to life. Oh, I haven't seen this um, article. Let me see. They So they, they bring up the fact that they're, you know, how did they survive this whole – um, the shootout at the end, you know, they're they're playing Freebird. They get in a blaze of glory. And Amazing. <laughs> it, it's honestly the perfect ending to any movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I mean, I love that guitar solo and oh, um, so good. And just watching people get shot while that's going on. Yeah, it, it was fantastic. Just, it was perfect. Um, so bloody disgusting goes on to write. Uh, as impaled by the potential title of Three from Hell, Rob Zombie very easily could bring back Otis, Baby, and Spalding by simply playing on the title for their previous film. Uh, the Devil's Rejects implied that even the Devil himself doesn't want, fi- want the Firefly clan, so it's fair to speculate that Zombie will bring them back to life by simply having the Devil, well, spit them back out. Hell doesn't want them, Hell doesn't need them, Hell doesn't love them, sings Zombie in his song, The Devil's Rejects, which really says it all. Um, I think that's kind of interesting. Um, if you're going towards a, a paranormal, um, supernatural uh, way with this movie. Yeah. Um, and I could see that, because from the title, Three from Hell, that, that, that kind of got me going. I was like, okay, maybe, they're, uh, maybe they sold their souls to the devil and they're just going to come back up and raise hell again. I mean, mm-hmm. that's all I, that I thought of when I when I found out they were making this movie. Um, but I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of speculation of how they, how they, uh, how they live that blaze of glory and how they are still alive. Why are they going to prison? I mean, obviously it's obvious why they're going to prison, but, um, <laughs> you would just, you would just think they would get the death penalty like a Yeah. Because, right. um, of all the, all the ki- people they killed and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, and George brought this up in the podcast a couple weeks ago because we had talked about this a couple weeks that uh, at first this was rumored that it was going to start production in March and then right. it finally got confirmed. But George brought up how House of a Thousand Corpses is all mystical and very – it's more – it's really more of a horror movie. And then yeah. when you go into Devil's Rejects, it's more of a, okay, Revenge. we're just going to go on a murderous rampage. Yeah. And so um, I'm hoping Three from Hell maybe takes both of those and then Frankenstein's them and then makes this a Three from Hell. Okay, I like that. So, I like that idea. Um, yeah, I mean, Three from Hell, I, I, I'm excited. I watch anything Rob Zombie. Um, I almost saw him at OzFest last year, but uh, <sighs> missed out on that opportunity. I'm not going to miss out this year for uh, to see Rob <laughs> Zombie because uh, the guy is just phenomenal. Um, mm-hmm. I love his movies. I love his music. Um, 
whatever else he does, it's great. So uh, time will tell. We'll find out. Hopefully uh, we can expect yeah. to see this uh, next year, I'm hoping. I'm um, hoping too. I got to know what happens, dude. Yeah. He's... I don't know if you guys saw his last movie, 31. That movie was... Ooh, that's the clowns one, right? The movie was good. Is that the clowns one? That's the clowns one, right? They, 31? So they showed... The, the, the promotional art was a clown. Um, mm-hmm. But the movie was... It was, it was kind of weird. It was more of like a... Almost like a purge movie, in a way. But... Mm. But it wasn't like the whole world was purging. It was just like these rich people, they do this thing every year on Halloween where they gather up a bunch of victims and they throw them into this like, uh, how do you say, like little maze uh, kind of area where they try to have to escape and there's a bunch of serial killers that go after them and they kill everybody. And, and it's, it's a I have not seen really, this. Really, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that, a very good movie. I highly suggest mm-hmm. if you guys want to check it out. Um, yeah, it's very good. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, we'll do a live stream of us watching that. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be a pretty good live stream. I wouldn't. I'd watch it with you guys. It'd be awesome. <laughs> um, all right. So, this is usually George's part of the segment, but I thought it'd be fun for you guys to do this week. What you guys got for us for a horror movie death? It's a classic, or a soon-to-be classic. All right, so let me give some context as to why we chose this first. All right, let's flash back to 8th grade Thomas. 8th grade Thomas <laughs> decides that he's going to pick up one thousand, a 112 page book, Over Stephen two. King's It. So he chose to read this book, and this book, from the beginning, is terrifying. It strikes at 8th grade Thomas's core, so much the fact that he hates clowns for pretty much the rest of his life. Well, until until he starts going to Halloween Horror Nights, and he's like, clowns, clowns aren't that bad. But he never touches the book. He never touches the book ever again. 2017 happens. 2017, he's like, you know what? I went through the experience of we it. Did. We lived it. I think I can do this. Movie starts, Georgie, and I'm like, oh, that's a cute Georgie, especially like Josue says, Georgie kind of looks like my baby brother. I'm like, oh, that's a cute one. All right. So, of course, it shows the scene, and I, I'm used to the Tim Curry version. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. He's going to reach in, and it's going to be the end of the scene. That's not what happens, though. Georgie reaches in to grab the SS Georgie from... Mr. Pennywise himself, and Mr. Pennywise's mouth opens wide, teeth yep. exposed, and chomps. Boom. And you think, oh, that's got to be the end of the scene. No, nope. no, it's not. <laughs> you see a one arm missing Georgie as he's trying to call, crawl his way back, and there's just blood pouring into the, the gutters, and you see this arm reach out and grab Georgie and pull him. And you see a poor cat, poor cat who witnessed this entire murder, and I feel for that cat. That cat's over, dude. I know that cat. That cat's got PTSD. <laughs> that cat's got PTSD. I just felt so bad for Georgie in that scene, man. Yeah. I was like, that was... why him? There could be like, take the take the other kids, leave Georgie alone. Yeah. It's just <laughs> take Henry Bowers. That guy's a dick. Take him. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say uh, uh, that the the Georgie crawling away was the icing. Just mm-hmm. on top of that scene. It's just because everybody, again, is so used to just mm-hmm. watching uh, Tim Curry just kind of reach for him and that's it. Yeah. They're not used to seeing this poor little kid just, you know, just fight for his life, life even though it's so useless. And I remember <laughs> when the director, he came out and said, he goes, Yeah, the minute, the minute this movie starts, there's gonna some, someone's dying. A kid's dying. I was like, <laughs> Okay. Um, I don't know if you want to if you just want to get into it, then I, I'm all for it. But uh, um, when I saw that scene, I, I was just so surprised to see how well they actually did with this motion picture. And yeah, I am so excited for chapter two. I cannot wait. Um, Me too. Likewise. Bill Skarsgård put his own name in Pennywise, where um, a lot of people were like, "Oh, well, it wasn't like Tim Curry's, but ben, Bill Skarsgård specifically came out and said he goes, I wanted to step away from Tim Curry and do my own yeah. thing on it." And I highly respected the man for that because now that you compare the two, it's just like, well, it's hard to pick a favorite now because they both did so good and they both have their own ways of portraying the clown. And I just, it, like I said, this is how I always put it. Bill Skarsgård did a really good job, but I think humor-wise, uh, 
Tim Curry's always going to get me because yeah, um, some of those uh, empty jokes. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what it is, right? Tim Curry did like he was the more, very like, campy, right? Yeah, he and was the clown. He was the, exactly. whereas Bill Skarsgård was the serial killer. It was the monster. <laughs> yeah. That's what that's what he was. Like even with the eyes, the fact that oh, he's dude. one eye is always looking at whoever he's talking to, the other is looking at the audience. He's looking directly at the audience the entire yeah. time. And, and, I, and I love that that's not CGI. No, like, I was watching an interview with the director, and he's like, he walks up to Bill Skarsgård, and he's like, okay, this is what I'm I'm thinking for. Uh, you know, Pennywise, I want one of his eyes to do like that, so we're going to have to put in this contact so that we can, you know, CGI. He's like, oh, what? I can do that. You made this? Another thing that was really uh, infamous from his role of Pennywise 2 was the, the lip thing he did. Yes. Oh, the drooling, yes. That was that was from yeah. um, the prosthetics of his two front teeth. They just made him profusely drool, and so that's why. No, but his, his lips. Oh, just having his lips. Oh, he has this, he like, this little, like thing with his lip where he just. Yeah, because like, it's like this like little V on his oh, lips. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, he okay. used to do I that. My bed. I, I think it was on some late night show he was saying. Oh, was it a late night show? I think it was. Uh, uh, I want to say Conan? Is it? Oh, is it Conan? I want to say it was either Jimmy Mr. Kimmel. Mr. says Conan. Conan? I think. Where he's talking about how like he used to like chase his brothers around doing oh, God, face, stuff that. like that. No, thank you. That's, that's, that's uh, too scary. That's some creepy stuff right there. Um, mm-hmm. I have to say though, that that's a solid kill. I, I'm surprised George didn't even come up with that one. And George is <laughs> Georgie, so it's just like. <laughs> um, that that that's a solid kill though. Um, before we we leave that too, I have to say one of my favorite scenes in that whole movie is when they blast Anthrax. When they're having the rock fight, I, I, yes. was, I was in the theater, fucking like head banging all hard. My dad was like, <laughs> like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Dude, it's Anthrax. So you, you'd expect me not to head bang." Hey, yeah. And the guys wearing a Metallica shirt and stuff. I'm just like, mm-hmm. "These are my friends," but at the same time, they're dicks. So I'm probably not. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that, that, that solid kill, guys. Um, mm-hmm. For the audience at home, I will put it on the screen for you. I know last week I kind of just half-assed everything, but this week. I'll put it on the screen so they can check out the kill if you guys haven't seen the kill yet. Um, yeah. So check it out. I think another one that's also really good is um, the wannabe Adam Driver, right? The really skinny Adam Driver friend uh, for uh, one, one of the uh, one of the bullies with the with the when he's trying to make his homemade flamethrower. Oh, uh, and so he's in the yes. tunnels, right? He's in the, the the sewers, and then he just sees like all the all the kids, and then he runs away. And then the balloon floats towards him, and it turns and says, I love dairy. And then it pops, and then it's uh, Bill Skarsgård right yeah. there. And then he's like, ah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's, uh, that was a good one. Um, one thing I did uh, enjoy this year, I'm glad you guys filmed it, um, was with you guys going through the uh, It house. Because mm-hmm. uh, I didn't get to go to that, and I really wanted to. Oh, and, a lot of fun. Um, we got there early. Yeah, yeah. We had to because we didn't get a reservation, so we we got there early to make sure that we had the content. About it way too late. We were yeah. just like, um, I, I think I was just like sc- scrolling through like mm-hmm. Instagram or something like that, and somebody was like, "Hey, there's an it house thing going on," and I was like, "What?" what? And I go to check for reservations. Everything was like already reserved. <laughs> and we were standby. We made sure to be like we were like what fourth, <laughs> fourth in line for yeah, the we standby. Were fourth in line, and we still waited an hour to get in. Yeah. Oh, that's better than nothing. You got in. I think. Yeah. If, I think if you do the Warner Brothers tour now, I think it's on. I don't know if they took it out, but I know for Halloween it was there for part of the Warner Brothers tour, mm. and you were able to go through it. I hope it's still there because that movie made him a shitload of money, and that'd be a pretty yeah. smart decision decision on Warner Brothers to do that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's um if it's there right now, but I if it's not, I could totally see it coming back for like. Chapter the two. Halloween season. No, maybe not even for chapter not, two, but again this year for the, the Halloween season. I'm assuming, or at least from like what I've heard, this was the first year that they did something ho- Halloween related at right, the, the Warner tour, Brothers yeah. Studios. At least I don't, I don't remember them doing anything before. Yeah, they if never, not, it was not advertised. Yeah, they as never much. did. Yeah, they never did anything because I know if you go on the tour, you mostly go and check out. Uh, the DC exhibit, and then yeah. you see uh, a lot of where they film a lot of the major studios and stuff like that. I've been on that so, lot twice, and that was to see Ellen DeGeneres. Mm. Um, but just going on that lot, it's just something else. I actually walked into the one of the things that I, I fanboyed out. At, I walked into the same uh, same coffee shop that they shot Friends in. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's cool. Central, uh, right? Central, Central Park. Park. Yeah, yeah. So. 
it's a little bit bigger now, and they actually turned it into it, one half of it is a Starbucks, and the other half is actually a gift shop. So it's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> um, but getting back to horror related stuff. Um, yes. We're going to move on to the next topic. This one kind of hurt me a little bit, and I'm a little sad that the ratings are kind of not doing too good on this show. But Bruce Campbell says we'll likely never see Ash again if Ash vs. Evil Dead gets canceled. Yeah, I think that was um, that wasn't much of a surprise for me. Um, I think there was a huge, huge issue with even trying to get season three out there. Bruce yeah. Campbell himself had to really push it like he even went on on interviews and on twitter and he was like don't worry guys no matter what you will see season three and because of that being such a big issue um i yeah i would not be surprised if this is the last ash versus evil dead season and i i mean i understand if bruce campbell's like you know ashley williams i am never going to do this character again because clearly there's no there's no home for the character. Yeah. So I I mean that would be heartbreaking, I mean, right? He's got a home. It's just he's got a home decades. with us. With us. Bruce Campbell, if you want to live with us, <laughs> you can live in our studio. Dude, I'm done. They rented out to him. <laughs> but he has to this. be like part of TLV now. And he always has to walk with the chainsaw in his hand. Like, yeah. Like every single video. That's a must. <laughs> That's a must. <laughs> We'll cut him a bit of slack on the rent. There we go, yeah. yeah. You, can like, you can, like, hang the chainsaw and the boomstick on the wall right there, and it'd be a perfect right? oh. Boom. Right, that is actually a really cool idea for yeah, decoration. It's a chainsaw. You might have given us a good idea right there. All right. right. I'm trying. <laughs> um, I honestly, uh, uh, I, if they do cancel Ash vs. Evil Dead, I'm going to be a little disappointed, because I'm, I'm so far this season, I'm loving it. The whole fact that he's got a daughter... And the daughter just <laughs> so far has does not want anything to deal with him. Just makes me laugh. Um, yeah, I do. I do have to say I'm really confused what they're doing with the Pablo character. I mean, we'll see. You know, we'll see as time progresses. I think it was very. I mean, he became such a big part in the second season. I feel like they're just really trying to milk it now with the idea of the fact that uh, his, his his uncle was was this uh, voodoo priest. Now he's becoming more and more uh, part of the Necronomicon. Um, I don't like the fact that now he is possessed yeah. by, by the dead. But they did that with, um, what's her name? Um, Kelly, no? Yeah, is, is that her name? The, the other chick, the main chick. Yeah, there we go. Kelly. Yeah, <laughs> Kelly. How she was possessed, but then there was like the whole ritual in order to get that demon out, right? Yeah. Uh, so I, if they're going to do that, okay, do it sooner than later, right? I don't want like this entire season to be like, you know, Mother of Death and Pablo. <laughs> Those are the threats. I don't, I don't want that, so. Um. As far as Pablo goes, it looks like they're trying to just make him like a, a, a voodoo witch doctor. Um, yeah. And I'm seeing that. I do I do agree with you, though, that they're trying to milk that, that aspect of him having the Necronomicon written on his skin and, and, and such like that. However, I feel, like you said, they should just kind of hurry up that storyline because I... I, I <laughs> I want to focus more on Ash, dude. The reason I watch that show is because of Bruce Campbell, dude. That guy makes exactly. me laugh anything he's in. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, yeah. like I said, I hope they keep this show going because there's there's, there's a still strong fan base out there uh, for at least Bruce Campbell. Um, yeah. And uh, we talked about this on the podcast a couple weeks ago. Um, but one of my, one of the... the the best things I think Bruce Campbell ever did is when they opened um, things from another uh, world, the new location at University mm -hmm. City Walk. He came for the grand opening and did some autographs, and he, I think he was scheduled for like two, three hours, but he ended up staying like five, six hours because he made sure oh, he wow. talked to, to talk to every fan, signed everything, and just had a conversation. And honestly, that's, awesome. that's why I think Bruce Campbell is one of the greatest uh, people in, in the world because – for him to have that commitment with his fans, like you could tell, he really appreciates everything his fans say and do for him and stuff. And um, if if this show gets canceled, I honestly will be a little bit disappointed. I I am kind of uh, 
a little skeptical about this though because he also did say that if this show gets canceled we might see another evil dead movie Mm. there's a possibility that that could come around but now he's saying i guess if it gets canceled there's no more ash so uh we'll see yeah um see what uh what's his name wants to do what's his name uh sam sam oh sam raimi sam raimi Raimi. spider-man spider-man yeah um (laughs) And you gotta love Bruce Campbell's cameos in all those movies too. They're, they're great. Yes. <laughs> uh, so moving on, uh, we're gonna talk about sure. American Horror Story again. There we go. Let's bring it back. <laughs> Season eight. Uh, Evan Peters and Kathy Bates confirmed as cast members this season, uh, and they just confirmed another cast member. She's a she's a series regular. Sarah Paulson. Is it? Who is it? Sarah Paulson, is it? I yeah, hope it's Sarah Paulson. I, I think oh, was she I, was she the, the main that? lady? She was the main lady from yeah. Colt, right? Did you watch Colt? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, she's, she's, she's coming back again for this season. Um, I love Sarah Paulson. Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates, I love as well. I love Kathy Bates just a little less than Sarah Paulson. How dare you? I, it's just because Kathy what Bates is Sarah Dunn. What? Don't even talk to me. <laughs> Don't at me, bro. <laughs> okay. Um. Evan Peters, I I think he did a phenomenal performance in Colts. Yeah. I hope that mean that doesn't mean that we're gonna have like the same kind of thing with him <laughs> as in Roanoke, which is he was in for one episode, and then he did like a cameo in another episode, and then he died. Yeah. It's like I don't I don't want that. I would want Evan Peters to be like. Maybe not his role in Murder House, but his role in Coven. Even though I hate, no, oh, I, don't, you I, don't hate I don't hate Coven. Oh. Right, yeah. oh, sorry, fans, I do not hate Coven. <laughs> but I think he, he had a he had a sizable role in Coven, but it wasn't to the point that it was distracting from the main narrative. What's the theme for this next season? It's like in the future. That's okay, all so I want so Evan Peters to run really fast. Because he was he was an X Men. Oh, that's yeah. right. He, he was Quicksilver. Quick so okay. I want Evan Peters. American Horror Story X Men. There you okay. go. I'm calling it. Oh, uh, was this filmed during Dark Phoenix? Where are we with Dark Phoenix? Yeah, is that is that over? I I just want them to. So stop. I think with Dark okay. Phoenix, I think it's supposed to come out this year. Okay. Well then, crap. Because that means he was probably filming that movie. During uh, I, uh, this season. Oh. Well, if he was just confirmed, that means they haven't even started filming. No. You know what? No, 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 no. They filmed a while ago. He's just conf- It's kind of like um. What's the What's the movie that I'm thinking? I mean, I'm not hit. I know, but basically, Infinity War, right? How those characters were confirmed. I love Infinity War. Uh, we're going to We're going to <laughs> comic. Let's go back horror. Come back horror. Um, I think it'd be great American Horror Story. I'm glad Kathy Bates is back. She did an amazing performance in the hotel. Did an amazing performance in um in Roanoke. Uh, Meh and Coven. So I just want. Oh, and Freak Show. She was amazing. Freak Show yeah. as well. I'm excited for the um, Peters. I really like the character. Yeah. I'm going to probably have to uh, pick off of what Josue said because uh, I think... X-Men. I think, yeah, with X-Men, I think he, they already had filmed... The movie, I think, is, I think it's... I think it's done as far as okay. the filming goes. I think they're mm-hmm. in post-production now. Um, so, right. And, I, and I, with American Horror Story, I don't think they'll start filming until either uh, May or June. And then they'll film all mm. summer... And then release it in October usually. Oh, okay. Um, well, then I guess we're fine. Um, oh. Yeah, and since it's only like eight or thirteen episodes long, uh, they don't gotta film like an entire season, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, they can get that done fast. Um, I don't know though. I'm, I'm excited because I love, like I said, I, every, every character that Evan Peters has played, honestly, except for Roanoke, um, I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, I would say my favorite character that he ever played, or my I have to say my top two. Well, now I got to say three. Uh, first one's gonna go to Hotel because I love this character. Uh, Jimmy, yes, Jimmy. Yeah, and I just love that little like '30s accent he had. It, it was it just it fitted him so perfect. Uh, second one's gonna go to Colt because his character was just so sadistic in that season and Hi. power hungry. Hi. On top of that, he played a lot of famous Colt members, which was really cool to see. Um, and the third one's obviously going to go to Murder House because his character in Murder House was just... It was something else as Tate. Um, mm-hmm. So that was cool. Um, but I'm excited for season eight. Um, this is supposed to be, I heard, like a futuristic post-apocalyptic one. That's what I've been, oh, that's what I've been, that's what I've been hearing. 
I don't know if it's Dude, the Terminator. <laughs> Terminator. <laughs> Terminator Genesis <laughs> of the Line. Yep. Okay. Terminator, that'd be, oh, that'd be dope. Mm-hmm. Yep, that'd be amazing. Uh, all right, so American Horror Story Season 8, coming soon, hopefully. Maybe we'll get a little bit of promotion at Horror Nights. Uh, the new season coming October something, whatever. <laughs> um, all right, so we do a segment on the podcast because we got noticed for it by this uh, channel um, this week on Crypt TV. Mm-hmm. Oh, props to you for being noticed by Crypt TV. Yeah, they commented on our video, and then I tweeted them, and they oh wow, they really uh, they really enjoyed our segment. So every week we uh, we've been doing it because not only just to the fact that we got recognition from them, but we do enjoy their content. Their content every week is 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 amazing. They give us some free scary videos. Um, they I think they produce I think three original videos every week. Um, yep. And then, but lately they've been uh, doing also promotion for the new movie that looks really, really interesting to me. I'm gonna go check out pretty soon. Is uh, Unsane? Unsane. Mm-hmm. That looks. Amazing. I don't get it. You don't get I it. I don't get it. I, to me, right now, what I think the hype is is that it was all filmed on like the iPhone, right? <laughs> is that, that's yeah. the thing, right? Is that's it filmed on the iPhone? Yeah, yeah, it's all filmed on the iPhone. I, I think it's iPhone eight. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. I literally thought. That's that, what I don't get. <laughs> I literally thought they just got a camera and were like, okay, we're going to make this movie all tripod. And I was like, okay, that's interesting to me. I mean, I've never seen a movie practically like that. But if it's filmed on an iPhone, that's even more mm-hmm. interesting because that that shows you that, honestly, horror fans and horror creators can do possibly about anything now. But um, Yeah. There is no limit. It, there yeah, really isn't. Just... So what I've been... Nothing is impossible. <laughs> what I've been picking up from Unsane lately was that uh, she's... She's getting, she's being stalked, but she isn't getting stalked, and they, everybody else thinks she's insane. Is she mm-hmm. seeing this guy in her head, or uh. that's what I'm kind of picking up? That I know that she's getting stalked, but everybody else says that this guy is not a stalker, and this guy is, mm-hmm. he's this, he does other stuff that a stalker wouldn't do. But at the same she time, isn't. she knows that she's being stalked, and she's trying to prove that she's not uh, insane. I don't know. We'll find out. But they did some promotions for that this week of like top five um, really smart, insane patients, um, top five uh, insane asylums in movies. Um, mm-hmm. And they just been little, little promotions like that. They did a little 19 second teaser on their channel. But the one I want to really pick up on this week that they did that caught my attention was a skit called Bloodbath. Yep. Um, Bloodbath was just interesting because. Uh, it, it starts off, you see uh, she kills this, this girl and she's draining her blood. Um, the first thing I thought when she got in the bathtub full of blood was AIDS, AIDS, AIDS. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> That's just, uh, like, he's got a point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, it, it just it was very cringy to me. So, um, mm-hmm. it, you know, she gets into this bathtub and she comes out younger. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, I think it was on a, a blood moon or something like that. Um but she does this voodoo ritual, then she goes out and finds this guy. This guy, you find out, is kind of just as sadistic as her and kills her, going into uh, her blood, and then comes back out says, I feel 10 years younger when he honestly just looks the same. But um, I just thought it was interesting because uh, I've always kind of been interested in uh, when movies do stuff like that where they drain themselves in blood and then they become younger. Like the voodoo aspect of it is is always just kind of interests me, and for them to kind of make this little short and then has like a little comic relief at the end, um, it was just really good. I mean, uh, they always collab with a bunch of people, and honestly, being a writer, I would love to collab with them. That would be just one of my all time dreams. Oh yeah, just I think Chris. I think what they're doing, um, I really it was because of Hollywood Harry that that they became on my radar. Yeah. Um, and I think they are doing great work. I think the fact that they compress it to being what between five to ten minutes long, I think there that really speaks volumes for for how it's written for for their directors for their cinematographers. And yeah, Crypt TV. Um, you know, if you ever want to want to do something with uh, Knights of Horror, I think you definitely should. I don't know why me saying it would change your mind, but I hey, think, uh, there you go. <laughs> we should all do something together with the League, Knights of Horror, Crypt TV. Oh, if there's awesome. if there's a collaboration option like that, 
I love it. I yeah. love that. I just oh, they, a little just something, a, something. they just did a, a collaboration recently too with uh, Dead Meat. Yep. Yeah. And so uh, the thing is, he's at five hundred forty-two thousand. We're at three. <laughs> hey man. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll there, get there. Though. We'll get there. You're you're half. You're almost to five thousand. Then from five thousand goes to ten thousand. Then ten thousand. Hundred thousand. Yeah, you're awesome. super black. Only get stronger. We only get stronger. There yeah. we go. I think that yeah, dead meat. J- James James A. Janice. I think what he does with the dead meat channel, it's very it's. I, it's very straightforward. I think that his comedy is very, very dry. The humor, I think, is great. Uh, I think that um, the way that he does his kill count videos, the fact that he puts 20 to 30 hours a week into those videos, definitely something I cannot do. So props to him. It does. It does show in his videos. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, the, to keep it up, I think he deserves uh, all the praise that he's getting. I would, I would be a liar if I didn't say I was jealous. <laughs> I wish there were more hours in the day, and I'm sure he does too. I wish there were more hours in the day to be able to create videos that that are, that, are as as visually appealing as his videos. So, yeah. to him, keep up the good work. To Crypt TV, keep up the good work. And yeah. to you, and to up. you, Knights of Horror, keep up the good work. And then, of, of course, to my guest, the league, who inspired me to do this channel. Oh, keep up the phenomenal work. Oh. <laughs> we try, we try. Uh, but yeah, that was this week on Crypt TV. Like I say every week, thanks Crypt TV for the free scary. Uh, we look forward to it every single week. Um, uh, we love all your guys' videos. Uh, honestly, the weeks we've been doing this, that's one of my joys. Is at the end of the week, I get to just kind of binge watch all the videos. Um, because it's one of the best parts of my Friday nights. A little free, free horror, and it's nighttime. Perfect. Um, before we move on to subtopics, I feel a little bad because uh, Mr. E is just kind of laying back there. And oh, I was Mr. Like, e. Oh, I'm not yeah. giving him any love, man, because... Yeah, I oh, come on. I got this. Come Don't on. Oh, go. Okay, go. okay. Switch out. There we go. Switching out, Mr. E. Come on in. The third. This is, uh, <laughs> good old... Mr. E here. Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing, Mr. E? I'm doing quite fine. How are you? I'm good. Um, first and foremost, let me say this. Um, when you guys did the live streams and first introduced Mr. E, I was the, one of the comments that said, let's bring this guy on the channel. I thought awesome. Was, yeah, thank I thought you. it was one thank of you. the... Uh, one of the, a very good idea that when they brought you on the channel, I was just kind of hyped for it and stuff. So that was really cool. Um, how you doing, man? You good? I'm doing I'm doing great right now. Um, just living life to the fullest right now. That's what I'm doing. So I I, uh, I noticed that you were uh, laying back there, and I was like, man, we've been going on for a, at least an hour, and and he's just kind of been laying back there. I don't want him to feel left out. Um, oh no no no. Yeah. Um, so uh, I I I said I said it and I'll say it again. Uh, thank you for all three of you making it onto the podcast. Um, we are Thank you for having us. we uh this is our 10th episode uh i it's our first kind of milestone i didn't think we would make it to 10 episodes because uh i literally thought we were going to do two and i was like yeah we're bored of this we're not going to do it no more but we've been going strong 10 episodes and uh like i said i guess i'll see you guys at, at 20 huh you know, yeah. Anthony, uh, something that, that Josue and I were talking about earlier, you, what you're doing is is great. It's it's really good work. We love the fact that you are really combining all of these different aspects of the horror community. Uh, we definitely want to see, or we will be watching how, how this channel grows, because we do see that this, this channel going places. Yeah. So keep um, up the good work. You know what? And, and me and George have, have honestly... Uh, talked about this before we even started the channel and and I'm, I'm so glad we get to talk to you guys finally uh one-on-one yeah. um but me and george had always said it would be the coolest thing if we were to become good friends with you guys because we see the content that you guys produce and mm-hmm. and that inspires us to to do what we do and it, it was just kind of uh cool to see how you guys are on your videos how enthusiastic you guys are how much fun you guys have, how much, it just, all that stuff, you know, and we're just like, fuck, we want that, that's exactly <laughs> how we should be and stuff, so, I don't know, guys, maybe Horror Nights this year, we might meet up. 
If you want to do that, or if you're at Monster Palooza, Midsummer Scream, or just let us know when you want to do another collab like this. Oh, it's yeah. a great. We're always open for collaborations. Yeah. Uh, it's funny you bring up Monster Palooza. I might not be able to go this time around. Hopefully, um, we'll, we'll see how the surgery goes next week. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. I'm supposed to be getting a surgery next week, and then I might be out the entire month of April. Oh wow! And then uh, I'm supposed to be getting booted. Uh, maybe like the last two weeks or week of april so oh, okay. we'll see how it goes uh, hopefully uh maybe i'll just have george woo me around in a wheelchair and be like all right there there we go. Go. <laughs> first things first always make sure that you take care of yourself oh, yeah. like rest well otherwise you, you don't want to cause it to be a, a worse situation for you oh True. yeah oh yeah oh yeah um so here we go we're gonna move on to our subtopics now mr right. i want to hear some of your input on these subtopics as well <laughs> oh boy uh, okay here we go Subtopics, these are topics that caught my attention but didn't make the main slate, but we're still going to talk about them because they're horror related and we love horror. We're going to talk about the first one this week on, this past week on Ash vs. Evil Dead. They uh, finally revealed his middle name. And <laughs> his middle name? Joanna. Alright. How do you. I, I, don't, I don't have much on this. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Ash was never my uh, biggest, I don't know, topic that I would look into. Um, what what is it supposed to connect to? No, it's just Joanna. his full name is Ashley Joanna Williams. So yeah. So that's two two female names yeah. I would say right there. That's so, uh. And that's funny that you bring that up because <laughs> uh, his dad um keeps coming back on the show. The guy, mm -hmm. the actor who played right. him is phenomenal. He played the Six Million Dollar Man back in like the eighties, seventies. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's on the show and. Ash brings that up. He goes, you know, I got bullied for that over the years and stuff like that. And he goes, how could you do this to me? He goes, well, we thought you were going to be a girl. So, yep. uh, awesome. Okay, that. so it makes sense now. Okay. So I, I just found it funny how, you know, I always thought, like, why is his name Ashley? Like, mm -hmm. what's the story behind that? And they finally revealed that. But then for his name, because you always heard his name Ashley J. Williams. You never knew what mm -hmm. the J stand for. So we always just thought, at least I always just thought, like, maybe Jack, Jonah. Right. Um I don't know, James, uh, something that's just in that nature, but it's Joanne. That's a, that's a great middle name. <laughs> yeah, it's a great. <laughs> I think it, it it really flows. Ashley Joanna Williams. It goes, yeah. it goes perfect. Joanne. Um, I just thought that was kind of funny. I thought I'd bring that up because uh, we, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, you know, you, you, you look at a character like Ash, he's such a badass. And then exactly. you know, to have a name yeah. like that, you're just like, okay, it's just better to call you Ash. That's why we call you Ash, dude. There you um, go. Moving on now, we're going to talk about Netflix. Everybody loves Netflix. Um, Netflix released their um, April movies, and we got the lineup for all the April movies of uh, horror-related stuff. Um, so here we go. Let's start off the list with uh, Cabin Fever. Uh, Cabin Fever 2, Spring Fever. Ooh. So they're going to come out at the same time, or around the same time? Yeah, this is uh, April 1st. This is all going to be available April 1st. Uh, oh, wow. There we go. That's, uh, a, that's a new way to do things. Oh, yeah. You know, have the two, yeah. Uh, I like that. Deep Blue Sea. Sadly, they're making a sequel to that. Don't want to see it. Mm. <laughs> um, I was kind of skeptical when I saw this one, but I could see the horror aspect in it. Mortal Kombat. Oh, um, Whoa, okay. I thought it was already on Netflix. I thought it was too. Um, yeah, huh? Same goes with this one, true. but then again, I can also see the horror aspect in this one. Sin City. Mm, ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I see that. Yeah, I can see that because of Marv and all that. Uh, Terminator mm -hmm. 3 Rise of the Machines. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do not like Terminator. It's an okay one. <laughs> not my favorite in the series, but no. I'll take it. The Lost Boys. That's a good Ooh. one. Um, the Queen of the Damned. I have yet to see that one. And then available April 18th, Friend Request. Um, that was the social media one, right? Is that the one where they're like... I feel like we're going to have to watch that for Cringe Cow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it I, was Friend Request. Cause I know they I'm trying to th is that the one when they're like on Skype or something like that? That one's Unfriended. Unfriended. Uh, I'm okay. trying to remember what Friend Request Friend Request. We're talking about Friend Request. Oh, no, 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 I remember yes. what friend request was about. Okay, uh, it was about this what chick about who went to school. Uh, she was kind of like the weirdo, and it focuses more on, uh, there's a, 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 like, a black magic thing where, like, it's called the black mirror, and when you look at it, like, something 
if you say this like like spell or something like it, it's like it curses you or something so uh she meets this girl and she tries to friend request her and stuff like that but then she turns haywire uh oh, whoa. oh. <laughs> and it's got a really good twist ending um because i watched i think i don't know if i watched kill count on it or i watched uh ending explained by found flicks on it but mm-hmm. it's very good very good um April 25th, uh, Psych, Psych, Psychonesis? I think it's a Japanese film. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's it's a Japanese film. Um, and that's April 25th, and that is our complete lineup for Netflix Horror. Okay, so that's a lot. Kind of a meh month, right? Yeah, I mean, I've, I don't know. I mean, I'll probably watch Deep Blue Sea, that's a classic. Uh, if I'm very bored. Which I probably will be in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Terminator. <laughs> yeah, there just, you go. Just because I like sci-fi and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, I'm assuming you guys been following the extremely wicked movie, right? With Zac Efron playing Ted Bundy. Want to talk about That's extremely you want to wicked? Talk about Boom, extremely tagging wicked. you in. Oh, Hold extreme, on, he's the one who knows all this. Wicked. Extremely wicked over here. Tag. This sounds great though. I'm not gonna lie. <sighs> <sighs> Alright, I'm back. Alright, extremely Tag. wicked, shockingly vile, and evil. The Ted Bundy evil. movie with Zac Efron. The Ted Bundy movie with Zac Efron. I mean, for one, I'm gonna say there is a big hype with serial killers this year. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've got this Ted. I, I know there's at least two more other Ted Bundy movies being made. Uh, one's like a biopic, and the other one's kind of like this, but it's. God, I don't remember who's directing that one, but. There's another Ted Bundy movie coming out. I then we've got... The one you're thinking of is directed by a girl, I think. I know which one you're talking about. No, I'm thinking of... Nope, I'm thinking of Charles Manson. Oh, yeah, and that then one, we've got yeah, the yeah. Manson movie. That's a, that one's going to be There's something. There's like three There's Manson two. movies coming out this year. There's like two that are going to be actual movie movies, and then Zach, Zach Bagans is doing a documentary on that. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's because he just passed away, so you know people are going to take... like. Kind of advantage of this because the topic's becoming a lot bigger yeah. now. No, that, that's actually a really good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, something I didn't notice. Um, I've always been interested in Ted Bundy's uh, per se work because I always felt that his character um, was an interesting character. Now, what I found interesting about this movie is it's going to be taking place all from his girlfriend's point of view. Yeah, and um, I think that's a phenomenal take on this. Definitely. It's such a good way to just, like, in, in one point, don't put us in the mind of the killer, and at the same time, lets us close enough so that we get to see exactly just, like, the kind of stuff that he goes through and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, but, see, with this um, article that uh, Blood Discussing put up this week, I won't show the video, but if you guys are interested, I will uh, tweet you guys. Uh, I'll send you a tweet on it. But... Uh, this article shows Zac Efron uh, in the makeup process of becoming Ted Bundy in a time lapse. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, Zac Efron has come out and said uh, – he talked to E.T. Uh, recently and he said, It is very interesting. I think the movie itself is very deep. It doesn't really glorify Ted Bundy. He wasn't a person to be glorified. It simply tells a story and sort – and sort of how the world was able to be charmed over by this guy who was notoriously evil and vexing and the vexing position that so many people were put in the world was put in so uh, you know oh sorry about that um you know i'm i'm kind of excited to see like how he's going to take this role um how he's going to act in this you know seeing a change from you know say high school musical and stuff <laughs> like that um now we're all in this together though you know exactly. Yeah, um, we're all you know it's gonna be a big change, and uh, I think it'd be great for him. You know what? Um, Zac Efron lately has been kind of blowing up with, with right, with right. Baywatch, uh, mm-hmm. Neighbors. Well, uh, Baywatch. I would say Baywatch. <laughs> uh, and, and and for him to to suddenly go from comedy to to horror, it, it just kind of interests me. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That was being said the same thing with Danny McBride when he co-wrote Halloween. I right. was like, yes. right. Right. wait, what, dude? You you went from vice principals and, and this is the yeah. end to let's do another Halloween movie. And John Carpenter loved the script, which made me even more excited. I was like, okay, what, what do you have in, 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 in 
what do you have for us, dude? The same way with uh, uh, Jim from The Office. Yes, The the Quiet quiet Place. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, Out of the blue. Yeah. Okay, you're going to do that. Fine, let's go. Now, he did some serious movies prior to that. He did uh, 13 Hours, which was phenomenal. Yeah, right, 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 right. That's a great but yeah, that's that's true. He did uh, ten seasons of The Office, or no, nine seasons of The Office, and you know he was so iconic for his role as Jim. And right. And he he comes out and announces, "I wrote, directed, and starred in this new movie, The Quiet Place," and it's been getting amazing reviews lately. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, yeah, I remember when I saw that. Um, I'm a huge fan of The Office, and I'm like, well, "Wait, Jim, Jim Howard?" Because I looked up. The Quiet Place. I saw that like a future movie coming out, and I and I saw that it was gonna be him directing it. I didn't know that he was gonna be acting in it yet. Um, you know, I just thought that was crazy because going through quirky Jim to now someone who has to save his family from some kind of monster, a beast. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I, I'm kind of glad they haven't really gave away what the monsters right like, fully mm-hmm. look like. Uh, that kind of gets me excited. They did. Uh, Paramount just released a clip. Uh, I think yesterday, and it was the clip uh, that you see in the trailer. Of, On the bridge? Uh, the bridge, yeah. The son yes. creates a toy, and then he runs yeah. real quick, and then tries to... And then the minute they're going to show the monster, like the clip ends, and I'm like, thank God. It's perfect. I, I like I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out in the land and say the kid's dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, <sighs> and, and it pisses me off every time you see that kid in the trailer. He always makes a noise. Right? Like, right. Really, dude? Come on. You live in this just, world where you know you have to be quiet. And you That's somehow it. find a way to fuck it up. <laughs> every time. <laughs> and it's like, okay, the first time we saw him mess this up was when he knocked over the freaking lantern. Right, right. The yeah. second time we saw him mess it up was when he activated that toy. And it just, at this point, I'm just like, just let the kid die. I don't care. He's yeah. clumsy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about Emily Blunt going into labor in the bathtub? Oh, She's totally going to die there. Not that me. situation right there, she's that's going to be something. Silent. She's going into labor, labor. Oh, she's man. fighting the yeah. urge to, to You know, scream. especially, like, I, this movie's going to be filled with jump scares. I'm pretty sure that's what the main stuff's going to be. Um, just seeing that scene, you know, she's going to have to somehow keep quiet. We don't know. We have no clue where See, Jim Halpert is at this moment. Yeah. But, yeah. but is it even a jump scare if they build up so much tension for this movie that any, any noise can be considered a jump scare? Yeah. Because this movie's all <laughs> silent and quiet. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, you know, I just... Uh, this this whole movie, I'm, I have to go see opening. Yeah. Premiere. It's I gotta see premiere. premiere. Or opening night, yeah. I'm gonna go for sure see that. That comes out in, what, like two weeks, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's coming pretty soon. We gotta get past... I'm looking really forward... This is on a non, non-related horror subject, but next week I'm really looking forward for Ready Player One. Get yeah. Past that. Yeah, that would be something. Got, uh... A Quiet Place, and that should hold me off until Infinity War. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That'll be a, a perfect set <laughs> Oh, Sway, I got I to gotta probably <laughs> invite you down to a, a new podcast we're going to start soon called The Nerd Fan Base, where we're going to just talk oh, about all these go. geeks, so then you can let yes. it all out of your system. Uh, <laughs> because I find myself on this podcast constantly going off topic, and I just like, okay, we got to do another, we have to do something else non horror related that we can just let it all out of our system. Yeah, I'll let you know for sure when that goes down. Yeah, let me know. Right. But uh, back to the uh, Ted Bundy. <laughs> um, I'm extremely excited for this movie. There's no release date for it yet. Um, I think they're still filming it. Um, right. I I was a little uh, surprised to find out uh, Jim Parsons was in the movie too from Big Bang Theory. Um, wow. Love that show too. And from him to go from a a smart character, which looks like I think he's gonna be a lawyer in this movie. I don't know if he's Ted Bundy's lawyer or if he's like <laughs> the, the victim's lawyer, but he's supposed to be like a lawyer in this movie. Um, that should be pretty good. And James Hetfield. Oh, dude, pop a head, dude. Dude, yes. <laughs> pop a head. I diehard fan of Metallica. When I found out about that, I was like, thank you. Have you seen the screenshots that they have of him in full costume? Yes. Oh my god. Oh, looks dude. so good. And. It, it was funny because he did. He came out in an interview after that saying that um, they had to cover up his finger tattoos and everything because he's of got course. tattoos all over his hands. Yeah. But I just think even if it's a small cameo, and me and George have constantly been talking about this, he's going to win every Oscar next year. <laughs> Look, if Kobe can win an Oscar. Papa Het's winning one, dude. Uh, <laughs> yep. um, I've, seen those guys, I've seen those guys twice, and I 
want to go back and I'm probably gonna go back and see them again when they come around again. But oh heck yeah, um, I, I, I'm, I that actually when I found out James Hetfield was in it and I was at first I was like okay why did they choose James Hetfield like don't get me wrong I love the guy but why did they choose him and then I found out the same director who was doing this movie actually directed some kind of monster the uh, mm-hmm. documentary where all they do is argue and I thought it was I thought it was kind of reasonable he's like I'm just a huge Metallica fan and to get Hetfield to do this role. It's going to be his first dramatic role. And I was like, that's awesome, dude. I'm all for it. Let's mm-hmm. do it. But uh, this movie's going to be good, guys. I think it's going to be I think it's going to be really good. Um, yeah. I, 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 I'm excited to see the point of view from the girlfriend. So that's what's interesting to me about it. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, this, was, uh, this actually kind of made me a little sigh of relief. Lately, we've been getting uh, movies. I'm going to, for example, I'm just going to throw one out there. Star Wars. Um, ah. Ah, yes. The original Star Wars movies, uh, when they re-released them on DVD, they tweaked them, and in my opinion, I think kind of fucked them up a little bit. Um, oh, yeah? I, I'm, I'm more of a fan of the original cheesy, see the wires, effects kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, when I found out Spielberg was doing this, I, 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 I was just so happy that he's not going to let anybody do this. But Steven Spielberg came out and said he will never digitally retouch any of his films, so Jaws is safe. Um, yeah, and when I meet when I when I when I bring up Jaws, especially, it's like a lot of people probably want a CGI shark, but the fact that that movie has a practical shark and that shark cost them a whole year of production, yeah, I just think that makes that movie more authentic. Yeah, uh, having the backstory with that, you know, it makes you enjoy the movie yeah a lot more. Like what you just you said, appreciate yeah. it exactly because yeah. they put so much effort into it. Yeah, and I'm just honestly the reason why I'm into film so much. I want to be a filmmaker one day. The two people that come to mind uh, one, that inspire me the most are George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Because they, they've done something with, with film that it's just revolutionary and um, they, they set a path for new genera- generations to come. Oh, absolutely. Uh, work. Yeah. Um, Steven Spielberg himself has such a, an amazing film career from stuff like Jaws to E.T. and now next week Ready Player One, you know, and mm-hmm. – um, one of the thing I just finished the book and I'm just like okay um, I'm not gonna be one of those guys where like the book's better and stuff but I had heard that you know that I guess there's some stuff they took out and stuff I'm not I'm not really stressing it though it's Spielberg you know so yeah for Spielberg to just say come out and say that he will never really digitally remaster any of his original films like a uh, third Enc- uh, encounters for, what is it third a uh, third encounters or, I don't even know the name yes uh, close encounters of the close third encounters kind. of third kind um, I think he did. No, that was Abrams. Not maybe he helped with it. Did he do Super Eight, or did he, he helped? It? It helped something like that. But Abrams did Super Eight, I believe. Yeah, I think he. Yeah. yeah, I think he executive produced it. But you know, like Jurassic Park. Um, I mean, if you watch even the new Jurassic World, we were watching the behind the scenes on that, and a lot of the dinosaurs they use are practical. They just have someone running with them in green screen suits, just so they. They were. Uh, they were heavily pushing for a world too that they were just like. Yeah, we kind of did CGI practical for, um, oh, my bad, for a world. And like, they're just like, for Fallen Kingdom, we really want to push more practical. because, yeah. and, and that's the kind of thing, too, is that people are realizing that although CGI is really nice and like we get such great things like, like Thanos in Infinity Wars, there's just something about practical effect that just like, it just compares to like no other thing. You give a lot of respect to it too, you know. That's what I like uh, about Ash vs. Evil Dead too. That's what they use a lot of practicals. And week after week, I love going on Bloody Disgusting, and they have articles saying this is what practical effects were used on the show this week. Mostly, mm-hmm. a lot of the show is practical effects. There's only very few CGI when they do like head twists and stuff like that. And even right. most of the time, some of those are practical effects because they know how to do it right. But I, that's why I've always respected Evil Dead in general, though, because. It's all been practical effects. Regardless, Army of Darkness, they did the skeletons, but those were kind of a mix between, like, puppeteer. Um, yeah, it was like a stop-motion kind of stop thing motion, that they did yeah. for that. And it was still practical, so um, all I have to say is Mr. Spielberg is thank you uh, for mm. doing that because I know a lot of movies these days are doing Blu-ray 4K remasters with uh, <laughs> yeah. CGI. And so I'm, I'm so glad that they uh, did this. Let's talk about The Shining. Ooh. Um Oh, I know. Is on this. What is it? Shining. Shining right now. Ooh, Shining. Okay, I'll, uh... Three just did uh, 
the conspiracy. <laughs> yes, my all conspiracies. All conspiracies. I am right, patiently. Uh, right. I, I cannot wait to see another one of those videos. By the way, those conspiracy. There's was, one coming up. I, I was, um, I was so, want to give a little hint? So happy. I'll give you a little hint. It has to do with some paranormal activities. Oh, nice. So, there we go. Yeah. Nice. Um, but I have to say, a lot of the theories that you covered, I agreed with 100%. Uh, yeah. Because when Horror Nights came around, I watched this movie religiously. I yeah. watched theories to this movie religiously. I one one of my favorite theories though is that it's it's from a certain point in the movie it literally trans transforms into the book. So from what we see Jack go crazy and him all that that's just mm -hmm. that's his book. And that's been right. my favorite theory thus far. Um, but what we're going to talk about uh, is kind of interesting. So there's a mega rare cut of The Shining with never deleted scenes, and it's gone up for auction. Yeah. Um, so actually, I've heard that this isn't the case. Um, Lee Unkrich. Lee Unkrich was the director of Coco. Yeah. Uh, he also did um, a couple other amazing, um, amazing uh, Pixar films. He is a huge fan of Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. In fact, uh, there is actually a scene yeah, it's in Coco movie. where it is a uh, is an axe, and it is next to a uh, I think it's a, a red wagon. It's on a, and then it also says, if you look very, very closely, it says red rum, red rum on the axe, too. Yeah. So, so awesome. he is a huge fan. And he uh, and so people, of course, told him about this uh, deleted scene. And he said that it actually is a scene that he has seen before. Mm. Um, so I, I guess this cut is very, very rare. But there are versions of it available. So oh. don't worry, people. If you want to try and find it, <laughs> awesome. if you there. It's there. It exists. Um, just gotta look deep. Uh, yeah, you just gotta look deep. <laughs> so I guess this extended cut of the movie right now, for all the people who uh, don't want to really do the research and you have a lot of money to do it, uh, mm -hmm. the starting price for this extended cut right now is thirty seven hundred dollars. Ah, uh, well, mm, that's more than I, I know. How long is this cut? <laughs> uh, it says it's the long cut of the original film, The Shining, containing the scene in which Wendy uh, carries Danny. Uh, carries Danny. These mm -hmm. cuts uh, given to by Kubrick to uh, these cuts given by Kubrick are practically rare because the director notoriously burned all the leftovers at the conclusion yep. of the editing. Right. Yep. Yeah. This is uh, one movie that's just kind of filled with mystery too because they exactly change the script as it going. You can't actually even find the original script on the no. internet because no. it only goes back to the uh, final cut of the script. Which I always found interesting, uh, because I've always wanted to see how this cut was before. Well, Stanley Kubrick was a very, very interesting fellow. I mean, he wanted to make sure that no one ever had the opportunity of replicating any of his work. Um, I think there's a very, there's a very, yeah, there's a very famous story about uh, Planet of the Apes that um, he there was a prosthetic. Someone was, I mean, he wanted to destroy everything about that movie so no one could ever use any of his stuff but someone found prosthetic for a mask do you remember what movie it was that it was used in um no no because there, there's a movie that it's like a b movie it's like a really really bad movie <laughs> and they somehow found the remaining prosthetics of, of one of the ape masks and they're using that in the movie whoa that is genius. It's, yes and it's uh that it's a total genius dude yeah. i would take every advantage of that if i had it <laughs> Every advantage. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what the repercussions were. Uh, I think it actually happened after Stanley Kubrick passed away. Um, but yeah, he was very, very interesting. He never wanted to have anybody. And so that kind of brings me to something that we talked about um, a while back on the podcast. They had confirmed that they're making a Shining sequel. Um, yeah, oh, is it based off of the book Doctor, uh, Doctor, Sleep? Doctor Sleep? Yeah, Doctor Sleep. I yeah. believe yeah, it's based off of that. So, which is oh, go ahead, go again, go ahead. Go that ahead. kind of bothers me because Kubrick's movie was something. Stephen King hated Kubrick's movie, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, he mm -hmm. hated that movie, and Kubrick didn't like the book. He purposely changed little shit just to piss off King, and that kind of made me laugh a little bit. But um, I just want to know how are they gonna 
do Doctor Sleep? Is it going to be its own standalone movie and you're just already supposed to know these characters or are they going to tweak it a little bit to kind of tie it in with the Shining that Kubrick made? Unfortunately, I haven't read Doctor Sleep, um, so I don't know um, mu- pretty much most of it. <laughs> um, so, But I do think that it is something where we're going to have to have a situation where we will have to separate the two. Yeah, It's very much like how, you know, 2000, how the Grinch stole Christmas, <laughs> and now this year we're getting a... The, the Grinch, Grinch movie, right? right. Benedict Cumberbatch. Those, with Benedict Cumberbatch being the Grinch as opposed to Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey yeah. which is if the, the only thing that could come out the, out of any movie that is a sequel of, of a classic is that it just really reinforces that movie as being a classic. Yeah. So Hollywood is a very, very much hungry for sequels right now. Uh, we've been getting that for, I'd say, pretty much half of this decade. We've been getting sequels. And I think that... Huh? Infinity Wars is a sequel. Yeah, it's been a 10-year sequel. Um, but I think that's what... It will happen, and as a response, no matter how good they try to make it, because there's no way Stanley Kubrick will be doing this, I don't think Stanley Kubrick would even want to do a sequel. He was so precise that he wanted, this is one movie, this is this is that movie, I finished with the story, now I'm going to burn it all to hell. Right? That's really what his thinking was. Uh, so I think no matter what happens with the Doctor Sleep movie, Sure, it could be exactly what Stephen King wants, but it will never be what the audience who grew up exactly. with Stanley Cooper exactly. wants. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing I have to say about... Uh, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but Stephen King hated this movie so much that he mm-hmm. actually went out and made a TV movie of The Shining. Right, right. yeah, I think right. it's, a, it's a BBC special, right? Yeah, like it's a British uh, broadcasting. So uh, I watched it. Uh-huh. It's, and? It's horrible. Oh, it's yeah. horrible. <laughs> it's bad. Um, he wrote that as he envisioned it, because Stephen mm-hmm. King did that. Um, there's a lot of stuff that Kubrick changed in the movie that he wanted to make it more realistic. And right. in the original Shining book, they talk about um, instead of a hedgehog, well, the maze is there. It's a major thing, but yeah. there's a part in the book and in the TV series that actual hedgehogs come to life. Yeah, like the they have like um, elephants like set up like what? like hedges and then they come to life and they attack uh, the family. Oh, so yeah, so Stanley Kubrick, shining. yeah, he did it. Oh, like that. In the, in no, and that seems yeah. And he wanted to take that out. He's like, well, maybe if I make the maze more of like the enemy of the family, and at the very end when we see um, you know Jack Nicholson r- running through to catch uh, Danny. Um, it, it, it makes a lot more sense because then you can see the actual enemy. What I did like that he kind of explained to it that the hotel was uh, built on an ancient Indian burial ground. And I, that, that's what made the hotel kind of come to life. And that was actually the main enemy to which uh, uh, you know they come to uh, realization at the very end. Um, I will just throw this out there. One of the, one of the, one of the things I've always kind of wanted to recreate um, as a film perspective uh, the iconic scene of uh, Jack Nicholson and Wendy with the with the bat walking up the stairs. Oh uh, like yeah, that. right. Yeah. yeah, I've always wanted to recreate that. Um, I've had the script sitting on my desk for like honestly a couple months now. It's just mm-hmm. a matter of finding cast for that. And I already have mm-hmm. one girl who would be probably really good for the role, but um, I'm trying to find the, the uh, Jack Nicholson part because I want to get someone who can get as crazy on his level right, right. or if yeah. not crazy, that, that would be hard yeah yeah um because we're talking about a guy who played the joker here and if you can play exactly the joker, yeah like, well by all means dude you can do about anything um but yeah i mean i i uh, i'm so glad that uh that, that that cut is out there somewhere for free because uh, i would not pay 3700 dollars to see that cut. No. i'm fine with the original blu-ray that i have that i bought for 20 there we go all right, so I found this kind of interesting. Uh, in Friday the 13th, uh, Freddy's iconic for... Or not Friday the 13th, I'm sorry. Nightmare on Elm Street. 
Uh, Freddy's iconic for doing a bunch of different things in Nightmares. One of the most iconic ones, I uh, don't remember, I think it was Dream Warriors. I don't remember. Dream Warriors, yep. Uh, they did the Dream Junkie Hand. That right now is on for sale, and this is what it looks like. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yep. All right, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a very classic on the syringes. Right. And uh, when, you, when you asked us to come up with a, with a, um, a kill, yeah, a death for, for this uh, podcast, I was thinking about doing that as one that's, I would say, as a bad death because it is so, it's so quick and it's so sad. Because she really is fighting, and she used to be a junkie, and he just kills her by just right back. Like, he opens up where her remains used to be, and he just sucks, I mean, just with those injections, and that's what kills her. But you don't really see her die, and I think that's the sad part of all of it. Yeah, I mean, um, I've seen every Friday the 13th and every Nightmare um, Those movies... I would say those are some movies that, like that, that goes with the Halloween, you know, all those Texas Chainsaw. They didn't do too much with Texas, but um, they kind of try to milk those series. But oh, I would yeah. say something with Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the Thirteenth that they just got more creative as they went on, like the kills and and just everything. I like Jason. I think has like a couple hundred kills on his list. Yeah, yeah, Jason. It's. 137 kills, I think. Where did they see on the tram? Yeah, so I think that's what they... We can watch back yeah. our tram video. The tram <laughs> video, man, that thing was just so cool. Like, they put it in the numbers and everything. I was like, this is amazing. Um, <laughs> I will say, have you seen Dream Child? Dream Child. Mm-hmm. Is that a Nightmare on Elm Street movie? Yes. yes. Which one was that one? Number that one. is after Dream Master. Maybe. I think that's probably like, what, five or six? That is that is the fifth one. Okay, no. I'm it sure. is so <laughs> bad. <laughs> it is so bad that, um, it, yeah, so, so I agree with you. Dream Warriors was, to me, the pinnacle of what they were trying to do with, um, with, uh, Freddy. Yeah. Then Dream Master, it gets a little, mm, like, all these characters are dying, so now she gets their powers. Okay, Dream Child, where there's literally a child version of Freddy who kills Freddy, uh, it, because that's how Freddy's trying to come back to life. And it's supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be the child of his sister. Uh, who the child that that was like a miscarriage? I think that's what it was supposed to be. Um, but then it it becomes this this uh, dream master. Um, it's actually I don't even think it is the same. There's so many characters, and the the third and fourth and fifth movie kind of mesh into one. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, Dream Warrior. Don't ever watch a Friday the Third uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movie after Dream Warrior. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I would probably agree with you on that. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I have to bring up this one because I actually did enjoy it, and I, I'm yeah. a little mad that fans did it because this one tried to do his own kind of funny, which was the remake. Um, my, my issue, yeah, go, go ahead, go. Sorry. I would say I, I enjoyed it because the guy who played Freddy, uh, played one of my favorite comic book characters, Rorschach, in Watchmen, mm -hmm. and for, for them to, um, for a lot of people to not, not, not like it, I mean, I kind of just think he tried to do his own thing. Um, yeah. And, uh, I don't know. A lot of people didn't like it, and I don't know. I think it's very hard, uh, right, to to really recreate any of these characters, right? Yeah, and that's, that's also why I'm kind of worried with, with uh, Halloween that's coming, you know? They're going to bring Michael Myers back 40 years later. Um, that's... It's hard, because Halloween, the original Halloween, is one of my favorite horror movies. That and Jaws are tied for number one for What about me. the original King Kong? Uh, the original King Kong is also pretty <laughs> high up there. Um, but what I think was the biggest issue of the remake is that it confirmed what everybody was speculating, right? Everybody was like, oh, you know, Freddy's a, a child molester. He's a child molester. But it was never confirmed. Oh, Freddy is there, too? No, 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 not now, down the street. Not right, the right. new one with yeah, the, yeah, the new with one. Rorschach is... Yes, yes, yes. That's exactly That's what I said. <laughs> um, I think the fact that that movie confirmed it, that's what had so many people in uproar. That's like, what makes it real. You know? Yeah, it does make it real. Um, I think 
But another thing was that it tried so hard to recreate the deaths of the original one. Like, uh, Katie Cassidy, um, the best with, with her, her, no, her death of, uh, being pulled up into the, into the air and then being, like, sliced open is almost a shot for shot of the, of the original way that, that, um, it's the same character, if she's, if she's playing the, the same character. Um, and so I think that's what is, I, my thing is when it's remakes, why do, why do remakes essentially have to be shot for shot, right? I agree with you. I think it would be amazing if there was a remake who told a new version of the story so that, yes, you could love the original, but you could also love this remake. Yeah. Because That's what Rob Zombie did. Rob Zombie did that, yeah. But I think um, yeah. in terms of the... I, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed Rob Zombie's remake of the first Halloween. The second one... I didn't like it because it was too dark, and not too dark as the fact that, oh, this is, like, dark and scary, like, too dark, like, I can't even see the damn movie. Usually, yeah. 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 It was all rain. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But the first one, I think he did a really good job because in the first one, he, he went into more depth of Michael Myers did more than just kill his sister. He went sadistic. Right. He started breaking down. He killed his stepfather. It shows the... The, the process of him getting checked into the mental asylum. It shows him growing up. It shows him coming out of the mental... It was a lot of stuff that we didn't see in John Carpenter's movie, which, don't get me wrong, Carpenter's version of the movie is phenomenal. That's my... like like Much like you, Thomas, that's one of my all-time favorite uh, horror movies. Um, but with, with, with Rob Zombie's version, he, he just... I think uh, he just went into more detail on Michael Myers himself. Um, and I think well, also another props to Rob Zombie is that he made it so that you can watch these two versions, that they are separate from yeah. one another. He's not trying to recreate John Carpenter's work because he knows he can't recreate yeah. John Carpenter's work. Uh, I mean, even John Carpenter with, with The Thing, uh, it's, it's, it's what defines him as a director, John Carpenter. It's this, this aspect of horror that he was reimagining. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there were slasher films before Halloween, but he reimagined the slasher genre. And Rob Zombie, being a very, very intelligent director that he is, knew that. And he knew that he could not uh, try to take take the throne as reimagining horror films um, or reimagining slasher genre. So he made it so that there was the, the separation between the two. And I think that's what makes a good remake oh, yeah. is that yes it does tell a new aspect of the story by not replacing the original story yeah i completely agree man um but nonetheless uh that that iconic uh dream uh, warrior's hand mm -hmm. uh that would be awesome to have as like a statue to put on display um because i'm always looking at like stuff that i can increase to make my backgrounds for my videos look cooler um, there you go one of my one of my things that shows up in my videos a lot is my Iron Maiden post, and I was like, "Oh, it doesn't get more horror than that." You got Eddie in the back, um, and he le practically looks decayed and scary. So, mm -hmm. um, but just stuff like that, I would I would love. So, moving on, um, I'm assuming all of us here likes to smell good, right? So, <laughs> they are coming out with Jason and Pennywise themed soaps and candles. I'm down. I mean. Pennywise, what? So it's gonna be popcorn. Pop, 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 yeah, pop, 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 Pennywise pop, pop, would be like on candy. Yeah. Jason, Jason's just, Jason just, just gonna be like a lake. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> like, uh, like a nice like. Like, oh, does it smell like the Pirates of the Caribbean riding? Yeah, so seaweed. I'm totally on it if it smells like the Pirates of the Caribbean oh, riding. I love that smell. When you walk in, it's just like, yeah. oh my god, it smells good. Oh, it's my favorite. Uh, it is. I am a little so. disappointed that they are taking out that one scene though. Yeah, we're not going there. <laughs> yeah, I, I that's a whole other conversation. Let's stick to horror. Oh, yeah. That's a whole other channel. <laughs> that's uh, more of a, a Thomas uh, Disney video right there. There you go, Thomas. There we go. Yep, second star. Yep, don't worry, Thomas. Subscribe. I, I, I watch that channel too. Oh, cool. Thank you. Because I'm a Disney fan. Um, but nonetheless... Um, mm. <laughs> Pennywise and Jason themed soaps and candles. Now, I, I would think honestly the soap with Jason in the shower makes sense because it's water. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that makes sense. Hey, using a Jason soap in water that uh, that makes sense. I guess you could say Pennywise too because he uses we all float and 
you float on water, so I mean it makes sense. I would, yeah, I would hope the soap floats then. I'm just waiting for my Freddy, my Freddy Krueger barbecue. Um, yeah, I mean, oh. I don't know. What do you, what do you think about candles? Or what, what, what can these candles smell like? Probably the same thing. Yeah, like a, like a lake, like a misty kind of like a oh, ocean there's, yeah, spring. There's, there's plenty kind of, of like waterfall lake. Yeah. Uh, and for Pennywise, something sweet, probably like a candy or candy or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah some something nice dipped, dipped in the soup. I have a candle right now that smells in my room. That smells like a uh, chocolate, it white chocolate, and oak. And it, yeah, I know, I know. It sounds I gross. Like but... I would get hungry constantly. Oh, okay. <laughs> the chocolate is just itself. Is... Oh, it's mm. Um, moving well, on from the soaps, yeah. though. I mean, I'll, I'll probably definitely look into those and probably get some. I can find them. Uh, additional filming has begun on the Predator teaser coming soon. I know Josue just talked about this on the weekly screen. I did. I um, did. We should be getting a teaser pretty soon, though. Uh, I don't know, man. This this movie's been in hiatus for so long. It's been pushed back three or four times now, and oh, yeah. I mean it's, it's getting pushed back again. And yes, granted, it is for reshoots, and the director, uh, not the director, the executive producer, came out and was like, "Yo." There's some bloody stuff coming in this movie. Like, it, it's it's going to be a gore fest, from what he said. So if these reshoots are to, you know, allow time for stuff like that, then I'm all for it. Yeah. But I got to see the trailer soon. Um, You know what? When they announced this movie, um, and regardless, I'm still all for it because I am a huge Predator fan. I have always favored the Predators over the Aliens. Um, regardless, the Aliens, I've always looked at almost like cockroaches, how they kind of just keep going, and all they do is feed and produce uh, babies and then just keep going from there. Same as a cockroach, that's all they do. Um, and on top of that, aliens just give me the chills. I hate face huggers, so going through that maze, it, I almost cried, literally. <laughs> um, but as far as Predators go, I've always loved Predators, and I am all for this movie. But like you said, I do have to see a teaser for this. The last Predator movie they made wasn't entirely a remake. More on the line of there's these Predators and then there's these other Predators that just are killing for sport and just don't care about their own kind. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know where they're going to go with this movie, though. Um, they can either... Do the uh, the typical Predator movie where they go on another planet in the future and uh, find a Predator. They could do uh, something like they did with uh, Arnold where they, uh, uh, he, they're in the jungle and then they fight a Predator. Uh, or they can do one where the Predator is on a mission to do something and gets terrorized by people and so he's got to fight back. Um, yeah. I don't know. Time will tell. Yeah. Uh, I think... Alien vs. Predator. <laughs> yeah. Alien vs. Predator was... I like them both. Um, yeah. I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Key from Key and Pills in this movie. Is he? Yeah. Oh, I haven't heard of this. I, I all, so. all I know is that this movie's going to be about why the Predators come to Earth, and it's not just for Hunt. Yeah, I, I think I saw a cast photo where he's playing one of the soldiers. Ah, um, I'm that's like, cool. alright, well, P Pill does get out. That, that that's makes sense. This time and you're too friendly. This time to do something whore too, man. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Only time will tell. Yeah. Let's talk about the other um, Manson film that uh, not haven't really been following. Not the Tarantino one, um, but the one that the American Psycho director is, is directing. Uh, Chase, Chase Crawford just joined the cast. Um... Not too familiar with this actor, but uh, he kind of looks like one of those pretty boys that you see on screen. Um, I'll show you like a brief picture of him. I don't know if you can see that real good. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He's got better facial hair than I do. <laughs> I told you. Um, <laughs> oh, damn. You, you but yeah, I guess he, just, he joined the... I don't know if he's playing Manson or if he's... I don't know what I don't know what her movie's gonna be about. I don't know what, because with Tarantino's movie, it's supposed to be on the perspective of uh, two actors trying to make it in Hollywood, move in around the same time, move next to Sharon Tate, 
Yeah, during the time that the Manta family start their murders. And a lot of people, well, what I've read, it's supposed to be the the actor and his stunt double trying to make it in Hollywood, and a lot of people are speculating that's going to be Leo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. Yeah. Because um, I know that they're in the movie. I honestly feel, though, if they're going to show Manson in this movie, I would like Leo DiCaprio to play Manson more. Because mm. he gets into good method acting, and um, not even like after I saw like Revenant and, and, and Django Unchained, that scene where he cuts his hand and kept going, I'm just like, yeah. that is so, that's commitment right there. And if he can it's bring that right commitment there. and bring a, a scary man into us, I'd be all for yeah. it. Yeah. I think the thing with, with uh, Leo is, um, I just. I, oh my god, I lost my train of thought there. He's an amazing actor. Okay. He's an American icon. <laughs> okay. Don't touch my Leo. All right. He's my Gatsby, okay? Gatsby. He's, he was a great Gatsby. He, he's my Wolf of Wall Street, okay? Oh, I'm my, not leaving. He's my Jack. I'm not leaving. <laughs> he's my Jack. All right. But, um, like I said, I'm not really following this movie too much, um, only because I don't. I mean, I liked American Psycho. That was a, mm-hmm. a great movie with uh, Christian Bale, uh, especially the scene where he murders Jared Leto because I'm not really a big Jared Leto fan, and I just thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm a Jared Leto fan. I just, I've seen him in I concert. I like 30 Seconds to Mars. I've seen him in concert. Um, oh, you like Suicide Squad. Don't lie. I do. Like That's Suicide gross. Squad. <laughs> no, I like Suicide so Squad. I just didn't like him in Suicide Squad. I wish there was more of him in Suicide Squad. There, there was, was supposed to be. <laughs> um, let's see how this movie comes out. Maybe it will be uh, like a whole different perspective on, on Charles Possibly. Manson. There you go. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about, an in-depth video examines why many viewers have stopped watching The Walking Dead. That's you. You stopped watching. I did stop watching The Walking Dead. Um, Why'd you stop watching? Did you stop watching after they killed off Glenn? What the fuck did you stop watching? No. no. You found out, right? No, you, no. you stopped. I you stopped stop? watching. Where the fuck are you in the story? Book? I'll have you know. I stopped watching, and probably some people are going to yell at me for this. I stopped watching mid All Out War. The last the last episode I saw was when, um, and this is a spoiler if anybody hasn't seen it, is when uh, Aaron's boyfriend dies? Oh. Uh, okay. You're at the end of that season. You're like still in the beginning then of this season. Yeah, you're at the beginning of All Out War. Yes, yeah. that okay, is the I moment. I won't talk too much about this season. Because <laughs> I know what happens. Okay, you know what you happened about Egan then? and Rick this past week? No, I don't know that, it. but I, I, know, I know what happened to, to, to baby Rick. You know about Simon? Peg? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Simon Peg's, Simon in, Peg's in a really weird movie Simon called Terminal. Rick, uh, not Simon and Rick, Simon and Egan, or Simon and Jadis. Freaking Trevor Phillips Industries. Oh, yeah. Trevor Phillips Industries. Oh, Stephen Ogg! Stephen Ogg. Is that, a, is that Simon? I think that's yeah, that's Simon. I don't know people's names. Simon. Yeah. Simon is uh, from Trevor from GTA. Yeah, that's also that's what we Because the minute he was on like... Walking Dead, I'm like, it's Trevor, dude. We better see some all out. Maybe, this maybe this will make you want to watch it. Trevor's going to make Sanctuary his bitch. Yeah! So, maybe, right, I'm catching up. There you go. There you go. I'm catching up. But I, I, now I, that you I will that up, say. I want to bring something else up, but you haven't watched it yet. Now I can't bring it up. Don't, don't talk about the Deacon and Rick situation. I, I will say this. The reason I stopped watching is it's it's building it's building up so much that at this point I'm like okay you're either gonna show me what you're gonna show me or or like it, in in a really like crude manner it's like stop yanking my chain yeah that's actually I think, exactly why George stopped watching too mm, I feel like that's what but that's really what it's been because they're like for me, that that's what the show has been since the governor, really. So, so I don't know about it, about this video, but I'm assuming it's around you know the governor that that's, that's when it starts happening. I want to say that people started really saying that they were going to stop watching after the whole Negan showed up and killed Glenn and Abraham. Oh, that was so good. I was all for it because I knew what happened in the comic. And I'm yeah. just like, Jeffrey Dean Morgan's on this show? You can't get any better actor, dude. This guy's literally done it all. He was freaking the comedian. He was the Winchester's dad. Yep. He was freaking... Oh, 
He's Negan, and there's rumor that he's going to be freaking Batman's dad in the new Yeah, Flash well, he movie. is. He's, he's Batman's Thomas dad. Wayne, um, and I like his name, so... Uh, and I so, love that that so, character. <laughs> I love that Batman character so much, too. Uh, but I, I, I just love Def- Jeffrey D. Morgan's Negan, because Negan is the reason I tune in every week. I, I can mm-hmm. care less if anyone dies. I just want to see Negan kill someone with that bat. Yeah, and I think that's, again, going back to the governor, that's really what the show has become. That if it's not a good villain, the show doesn't go anywhere, right? That's why they spent, like, what, two episodes in Terminus? They spent, like, an entire season getting to Terminus, and then two episodes of Terminus, and I said I'd wake up. I feel like the Terminus was done way better in the comic than it was. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. Like, I think that... They have, they have this situation where they are now bouncing from community to community. Rick is killing all the leaders of these different communities. And and it's I miss gruff scruffy big beard Rick, right? Yeah. That was that was like when Negan shows showed that, like what was it, two seasons ago now? When Negan showed that big beard Rick first entering Alexandria. For me, that's when the show took this turn where Rick is no longer this this leader, this badass who will do everything for his people. He's now like, I don't even know how to describe him. He's not a family man, though. Because he, he's like, you know, I, I have built this entire plan, but I see Negan, so I'm going to chase after Negan. And it's like that, but that doesn't. That's no. That's stupid. No. And like him, him and Daryl will now have like bad blood between them. And it's like that's not. It's like so. I think ever since the entering of Alexandria, but for me, really, it's with the governor that the show became this way. But really, the scene where Rick shaves off his giant beard—that's when the show took this turn, and it hasn't. I mean, it's, it hasn't developed any further than that oh yeah um i mean I, I i like i said i just continue to watch it now because i love negan jeffrey dean morgan really brought that character to life oh, yeah. and i just feel that uh that's probably one of the reasons that's kept me going from this show i'm, I'm just at this point i'm just like all right negan who are you killing this week um mm-hmm. or who's dying this week um, but even then so you, you might well i don't know Cover, cover years or something. But even that now, Negan is like so docile, right? Yeah. Like, Negan is not, um, he's not killing, right? He's like, no, we need order. And that's why even the people in Sanctuary are like so fed up with him. And I think, so, I think after what happened to Carl and he found out, that's what kind of flipped him. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, 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 it's, it's, uh, yeah, we'll see. Like we'll, say, we'll stop the conversation then. <laughs> I'll, I'll end it with this. Last episode opened up and left a lot of things that need to be answered in the future. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Well, only time will tell. All right. All right. Um, we got any Godzilla fans over here? I, I am, but of the original, original, I cannot stand that. Bless you. The 2014 right, remake. Yeah, you mean Brian Cranston, who's That's in there for, right. like, ten minutes and then is gone? And Kick-Ass is in the movie, too. Yeah. And Scarlet Witch. And Scarlet Absolutely. Witch, and they're married and they have a baby. That's yeah, dude. weird. Why is that weird? And then the one guy that sister? comes out of nowhere... You watch Game of Thrones every week, and you're like, oh, he's yeah. having incest next. Hey, that's Peter Dinklage, though. <laughs> If they brought Peter Dinklage into a freaking Godzilla movie, now we're talking. The big in the small. But like for me, I have yet to see the new King Kong remake. I, good. I just it's is good. Is it it's because good. John Goodman dies? Samuel Jackson they all died. Die. Loki dies. He's, he's in the movie too, man. Yeah, like all these people are in this movie. Captain Marvel's in that movie. Yeah, yeah, Loki, what? Captain Marvel. There you go, Marvel crossover. And Sam Jackson, Nick Fury's there it's, too. It's like, yeah, but like, it's honey, where's my super suit? Where's and that? and the guy from uh, Dead of Compton. Hmm. The post credit scene for that movie is. I got goosebumps. I've heard that because you told me all about the post credit scene. Because you were gonna watch it. I, I wasn't you were gonna I'm watch not, it. I'm, I still haven't watched you it. You should like, though. What we got like. Was it like two more years before we finally They're see having the Infinity crossover? Wars Godzilla, so, and you're not caught up yet? I will say this, with 
this remake that they're doing, King Kong vs. Godzilla, it's definitely by far going to be already better than the original one they already did in the 30s or 40s. Um, and that being said, they they go into detail of why King Kong is so big in this next movie and why uh, he'll continue to grow in the in the years coming and be as tall as, as Godzilla. Um because isn't he just like a baby right now? Yeah, he's baby Kong. He's baby Kong. He's, when we get King Kong. I think what is it, normal King Kong's like a hundred feet tall, and this something like that. Like, this one was like double that. I want to say he's huge in this movie. And what pretty beefy. I just uh, I know, know that know. it ain't my Peter Jackson. The, the, eyes, are, Kong, the, are, eyes, are the eyes are gateway to the soul. To the soul. <laughs> so if it's not that, and if it ain't King Dong, I just, right, yeah, right. exactly. So that's why I'm like, for me, going back to like how we were talking earlier about remakes, if it doesn't add anything more to what's already been told, I'm not a big, and I'm not a big fan of how the new No, Kong no, but I, I will say this. Like I will that. say what you're saying right uh, now. I actually just did a whole report that the fact that King you you can't technically remake King Kong movies because the, there's this whole copyright thing going back way since the creation of King Kong. You can use King Kong, the property is in the public domain, okay. but you cannot recreate the original story of King Kong taking him to uh, uh, Skull Island. Skull Island. Universal was able to do that because Universal owns some rights mm-hmm. to to that to that story, not full rights. So technically, this movie is a brand new story. It actually really Kong. is. It has literally nothing to do with the original. Seriously, movie. they're in a whole different time, too. They're in Vietnam, dude. Yeah. Hey, they're in Vietnam. Can we stop being in Vietnam? That was such a tragic no, part of That's where the American best music history. is. That's what the yeah. Anti Vietnam. We are so spinning out of this horror stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, right. okay, so let's right. talk about what it was actually supposed to be. Uh, mm-hmm. Shin yes. Godzilla. They made this Japan made this Shin Godzilla movie because they thought our version remake was so, shit. So they're like, we're gonna we go. do it our own way, which I watched, and it happened to be even more shit than what we made. <laughs> I have to say, if you guys are, if you guys decide to watch this, full blown warning. It's for one, it's all in Japanese, so you're gonna have to read subtitles. That's fine. But two, just the way Godzilla looks, it just bothers me so much. I won't get into too much on that. I want you guys, if you guys get a chance, to check it out. But do you know how they made the original uh, screech of uh, Godzilla? Wasn't it like it was like a mixture of a couple things, wasn't it? It's actually um, so someone is wearing a powdered glove. Yeah. On a cello, and they go, Broom, and then they slow that down. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they get the uh, Godzilla sound. I but think I guess uh, in it. Tokyo they praise Godzilla. They have a whole Godzilla hotel. Irony. Uh, <laughs> I guess. So, they destroyed Tokyo. <laughs> Tokyo. Oh, you praise so- Godzilla. He destroyed Las Vegas. Ah, shit, you're right. You're, you're right. from Las Vegas. You're right. There we go. All right. Or if you're talking about uh, Austin Powers, uh, still we should run like it is Godzilla. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. But I guess they released a new Shin Godzilla statue erected at Tokyo's uh, Hibiya uh, Channer Square. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And let me try to see if I can pull up a photo of it. This thing is... For one, I don't like the way Japan... And me, my dad is a diehard sci-fi guy. He loves anything with big monsters, anything with cyborgs or anything. He just loves it all. I just don't like the way that they made this statue, though. Um... The one thing I had with Japan's Godzilla, here's like a little little picture of it. Let me see if I can. Yeah, looks like a lizard. Um, the one thing I didn't like that they did with this Godzilla is they made his tail way bigger than he actually was. Yeah, it's like twice his size. He's got tiny arms. Horrible. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, is it? Just from the start That's... of this movie, it's bad. It's yeah, that Godzilla couldn't rip open a, uh, another creature. Does, he, does Does Godzilla light up? Does he light up? Uh, like when he gets his nuclear ray? Yeah. And, uh, I think he does it oh. once in the movie, but he doesn't even really fight anyone uh. in, in the movie. He mo- mostly. Uh, so no vertical drop kicks that go for a couple miles. Oh no! Yeah, he just it's, it's oh, the classic did, Godzilla yeah. story of him just tearing. Oh, that one. Well, that's the classic version. Yeah. This is the one that used to be here, and they, they replaced, replaced it with that. Oh, that's kind of. 
Pussy. Yeah, they, they had the original, and then they replaced it with this bullshit. Oh, it's oh. Lizard Man. Ironically enough, though, that movie won what's equivalent to best motion picture of an uh, Oscar in Japan. Oh. Interesting. Ironically. It won a, a, won a lot of awards equivalent to Oscars in Japan. Uh. Um, Interesting. I don't see how. I'm so glad I didn't go to the movies to see this because it was in uh, Phantom Events for like a limited time. My dad wanted to go so bad and then I finally found it on uh, the internet. I'm like, here you go. But, okay. uh, I don't know. You guys get a chance to check it out. I don't I think know. What are you doing? Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So I assume that you guys, I don't know if you guys have seen these posters this week, but they revealed some new watercolor horror posters. Let me look it up. This artist, Christopher Shy. Uh, and they are just phenomenal looking. I just I love the way they look. Um, they were all over Instagram and Twitter this week. They did one, I know for sure, with uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, because that was the cover for uh, the article. And I, I think, I want to say they did one for The Thing, too. That's nice. I, I look at The Thing right here. I framed that. Yeah, so he did a really good job with these, uh, with, as far as detail goes and stuff. I, li I really like the way the Freddy Krueger one looks. That one's cool. He did, let's see, The Shining, Salem's Lot, Walking Dead, Event Horizon. Uh, two different Nightmare on Elm Street ones. Which one's this one? This one's Salem's Lot. Best one. Yeah, that one's Salem's Lot. Um, let me see what the shiny one looks like. I gotta see that one. That's okay. I think we can move on from this. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, those are pretty cool. Um, I would definitely frame the Nightmare on Elm Street ones. Mm -hmm. um, they look cool. Um, we already talked about Predator. I'm going to take that one off. But, uh, just really quick, I guess they're going to release it in 3D. Um, I'm not a big fan of 3D. But, Nor am I. Uh, I'm more of a Dolby Theater kind of guy, so. I'm more of a 2D screen because yeah. the budget. <laughs> um, here we go. Uh, if you guys have Nintendo Switch, UK retailer now lists Diablo 3 for the Nintendo Switch. Isn't Diablo 3 actually give, being given out for free right now? On PS Plus, right? I think some like that. No, I believe on uh, if you're a Amazon Prime member and you're subscribed to the the Twitch Prime thing that they have, they're giving out Diablo three for free right now. Nice. I'm totally gonna do that right now. <laughs> right, yeah, I'm gonna have to do that right now too because I am an Amazon Prime member. And, uh huh. Uh, do that. Yeah. I I played Diablo three. It was all right. Not too bad. It's just it's pretty much World of Warcraft without World of Warcraft. Same style, okay. the same style in a way, you know. Um, it's good, uh, but if I, I've honestly the last couple of weeks been thinking about getting a Switch too because they just added Outlast and a couple other games I want to get. Um, Prince of the Wild. Prince of the Wild. That's exactly. That's actually the main reason why I want to get it. Same, dude. Um, so I'm thinking about maybe putting some money aside. It's either between that or a car right now, and I'm leaning more towards the Switch because it's cheaper. And it's for it's first to buy. It's cheaper to buy at the moment. Um, we'll see. <laughs> um, all there right. are other ways to get around. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> I live right down the street from my work. I can I can ride a bike. Oh, there you go. Um, this one was pretty cool. You guys might have seen this one too. Custom horror VH VHS tapes. Yep. Yes, yep. those are cool. Oh my god, they did the blob. Uh, they did the thing. the thing. Uh, Critters, Creep Show. I love Critters. And that was it. That was a good one. Yeah. The Creep Show, Critters, uh, and the thing were pretty cool. Even the Blob. Um, I don't know if these are available for sale, but they were at an art exhibit, right? They are. They are available for sale. They are selling oh. for eighty dollars a piece. Oh, that's not bad. There we go. We'll just cover the entire studio with this. I like that. Yeah. We can put them all over the studio. Um. With, along with, along the with our Ash Chainsaw. With our Ash Chainsaw and our Switch. Yeah. Go, <laughs> we're not <man>. getting a Switch. <laughs> um, Wait, we're not getting a Switch? <laughs> let's get a Switch, all of us. We can go. Uh, Mar Mario Kart, man. Mm -hmm. um, Smash. Earlier we talked about the new Leprechaun movie. We yeah. got introduced. Garbage. We got a little teaser on St. Paddy's Day of who, uh, what the Leprechaun looks like. Looks pretty mm -hmm. cool. Five pictures, you want to 
Uh, we got uh, the name of the guy who's playing him too is uh, Lyndon uh, Por Porco, and he'll be playing our new Leprechaun. Trashkin. Yeah, no, I saw. I saw. Oh, the you scene, saw it. Oh, okay. I did not like it one bit. I, <laughs> oh shit! Back for me, no. I thought it was ridiculous. I think it's. I dare even say the rapper Ludacris. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what the whole genre or the whole system. Well, okay, okay, is. yes, yes. But that original Leprechaun looks a million times better than this cheesy prosthetic. Leprechaun. Oh, oh, you're talking about the look. Ah, I hate the look and I hate the voice too. Oh shit! Yeah, I like the old voice better. Hashtag cast Thomas as Leprechaun. Yeah. Oh, I can oh, totally do the voiceover like if I need to do it in <laughs> French. I'm the elder. <laughs> I'm the elder. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll probably check it out only because it's going to be on sci-fi, so I don't got to pay no money to watch it. <laughs> so there you go. Um, next thing we're going to talk about, this is huge, huge news. All right, okay. It's so huge. It's great. It's going to be great. Um, huge yeah. news. Nick Castle, guy who's mm -hmm. playing Michael Myers, mm -hmm. teases... A possible new trailer for Halloween at Niagara Falls Comic Con. So on until his, until I see it. Yeah, exactly. On it's his Twitter account, um, who I I started following because he started putting up uh, pictures. Yeah, he started putting up pictures that like other people weren't, and I'm like, all right, now I got to follow this guy because he's putting up some good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he listed this picture with Michael Myers. And it's got a countdown on it. Uh huh. And then what? for the caption, he wrote, "All will be revealed." <laughs> so I'm hoping when we see this over the summer, June 1st to the 3rd, we uh -huh. uh, see a good, hopefully a good trailer. Finally, because I'm anxious to see what this movie. Here's is. hoping. Here's to hoping. So yeah, that let's look forward to that. June 1st, June 3rd, we'll definitely talk about that on the podcast. Dead by Daylight, everybody. Hopefully knows that game. If not, uh, very well known game where you're supposed to be a killer and you're going around, uh, obviously killing people, putting them in traps, keeping them in traps, keeping them from escaping. They've mm -hmm. done variations for Halloween, A Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Leatherface, and Saw. Um, and I just recently, to, yeah, Saw right. just recently, and I've yet to try any of those except for the Leatherface, which is pretty cool. Um, they preview the year ahead with new killers, new maps, and new costumes. Um, looks like they're going back to their original ways of how. In the beginning, they had just original killers and original people and everything, so that's that's really cool. I'm kind of a big fan of that game, so we'll find out. See if it's any good. Yeah. We'll check it out. Um, we mentioned earlier Zach Bagans producing the Charles Manson documentary Manson's Bloodline. So it looks like he's going to go beyond just Charles Manson, but check out his completely uh, full bloodline. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully that's good. He's also doing another documentary that comes out i think this month or next month about him going to the exorcist house cool so we'll check that out see what's going on uh platinum dunes producers update on con um, current status of friday the 13th franchise it's a dead horse <laughs> excuse me i'm tired i'm so tired of friday the 13th movies <laughs> oh friday the 13th movies. yeah, yeah. excuse me <laughs> Jason needs his breast. Nah, dude. Jason <laughs> is the killer. Um, Jason is a killer. If he was in PUBG, he would already have oh, Winner Winner Chicken right. Dinners. I'm just saying. I have to say the remake that they did wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad, but it wasn't too good. Yeah. <laughs> they made him run in here more, which he's never run in any movie. Um, mm -hmm. But I mm -hmm. thought that kind of made it a more scary Jason, just the guy who played him. Uh, it wasn't even like a run. It was like a faster hobble. I, I don't know. I, I, I did like how the trailer like emphasized on it. It was like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, let's let see. him rest in peace. Let's just say that. Rest in pieces, Jason. We were supposed to be getting one last year or this year, and then they canceled on that. Um, that franchise is probably officially dead. Um, yes. They said... They did come out and say there is... A chance it can come back, but not anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Um, we'll see. <laughs> All right, last thing on the subtopics because we've been here too long. I'm sorry. Um, yes. Who? Any of you watch Riverdale? Yes. I uh, I I started maybe watching it uh, a little bit. Uh, 
not fully into it yet, but I'm going to give it a chance. Images preview the upcoming Carrie-themed episode of Riverdale. Yep. What? It's actually Carrie the Musical. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Thomas, I would say since you know the, the probably most about this than uh, all of us, because I, I just started watching it, so I, I haven't sure. watched it. Uh, so, so Cole Sprouse, you know, oh, like yeah. Sweet Life, Zach, Zach and Cody, Cody. Uh, he, he survived an entire Disney career of never doing a musical episode. So the people at CW said, well, fuck you, Cole Sprouse, and so they decided to make a musical episode. Um, it's something that Recently, they've been doing a lot of, but I guess making every single character know how to sing. So they have one, uh, I think, is it next episode? <clears throat> doing this Carrie-themed uh, episode? Is that next episode? I think so, because they've been hyping it up a little bit a lot this mm-hmm. week. And I think that's the, the same week they're doing the uh, Supernatural Scooby-Doo crossover. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, so Cheryl Blossom is uh, the character. She's actually a YouTube, uh, the actress uh, whose name I'm slipping, uh, slipping my mind. She's actually a YouTuber now. I just did. Um, <laughs> it's, not, it's not I just did. But she's, she's a redhead, and she's going to be uh, Carrie. Right now in the storyline, um, there is some struggle sh- with Cheryl Blossom. With Sharon Tate? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tim's Tim's unaware. So Cheryl Blossom right now is in an insane asylum. So I Who's think Cheryl Blossom. Cheryl Blossom. She's she's the daughter of the Blossom Fortune, and her her twin brother JJ, as she mm-hmm. calls him, Jason Blossom. Jason Blossom. He was murdered in season one, and that's really what started this whole thing. Anyway, the main focus is that all the characters are going to be recreating this. Carrie the musical, which was in fact a musical, I did not do well. I think it's kind of like, um, uh, what's it called? You did it. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Excuse me. Uh, Rocky Horror. It's no, in the, let me finish. It's similar in the fact that it did not do well critically, but it built, it built up a cult, and so now it's considered a cult classic. So that's mm-hmm. similar to, uh, Carrie the musical. So they were, they're going to do that, uh, because it, it kind of goes with the theme of, of the whole uh, series being, you know, really raunchy, but also being so wrong that it's so right. I just miss Archie comics, dude. Like honestly, I <laughs> I w- kind of want to go back and look at Archie comics and compare. It, it's to nothing them. like exactly, this. Exactly, because this is just so so far off. It, it's it's literally it's literally like, oh, Archie goes to school. Oh no, Veronica's yeah, right? being really mean to him. Uh oh! Well, now it's more like Archie goes to school. He and Veronica totally hook up. Uh oh! Oh no! <laughs> That's what I found interesting when they did Riverdale too. My dad told me that these were just like comics that were like not serious at all, and then they re- re- rebranded the franchise and made them serious, and then they brought the show, and now they're doing another line of comics based off the show. So I think that was pretty cool that they that they're doing that. I I can. I from what I've watched, I've watched like the first two episodes so far, and I, I'm kind of enjoying it, and the. Reason why it's, I'm staying around is because Cole yeah. Sprouse. <laughs> it's like a love hate relationship. Yeah, Cole Sprouse really is the best character. Does he like burgers? Of course he loves burgers. They all love Pops. Pops is like the place they go yeah. for their burgers, yeah. right? Um, his crown is a beanie, but there is one episode where he act- it actually is a crown. Um, but yeah, that show, it's, um, it's something. It's something. Um, yeah, the, uh, the Lodge family. Um, yeah uh it's kind of predictable at some parts other times it's like okay i guess we're going that way i just hate the fact that they're all like in their late 20s and they're all pretending to be in high school not seniors not juniors sophomores Uh i was about to say if they're freshmen (laughs) they're not freshmen they're all sophomores and i wish i was that good looking in my sophomore year i was not so (laughs) Uh, yeah i was i was I was something else in sophomore year. Mm-hmm. I was going through my metal phase, which I still am in that right now. But mm-hmm. nonetheless, we're going to end the show like we do every week uh, this week in YouTube. And what mm-hmm. I do on this week in YouTube is basically pick out my favorite YouTubers and basically just help them gain more viewership than they already have because I feel that they do amazing work on their content and they deserve all the views they can get. Starting off on the list. Of course, my guest, the League of Extraordinary Vloggers, Thank you. put up Supernatural Scooby Doo crossover <laughs> on the weekly screen. Another episode yes, of yes. the weekly screen. If you want to get your news uh, every week from anything horror related, go to the League of Extraordinary Vloggers, watch the weekly screen. 
We out here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so they put up that this week. Uh, like I said, I watched it and I get my news from it. So, Crypt TV, we talked about them earlier on the podcast. They put up uh, The Sculptor, which was kind of weird. Uh, the, Ma- the Maestro, which was another mm-hmm. pretty weird one. I liked so, that one. The Maestro was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, top five unsane stalkers in film. Mm-hmm. Top five unsane institutions, bloodbath, and that's it. So, uh, Crypt TV puts up three videos each week. Go follow them. Go check them out. Uh, huge uh, fans of them. SoCal Exploring guy's been helping me out a lot lately, man. He made some new uh, stuff for the podcast, and I appreciate that. He made me my logo, and I like the way my logo came out. Um, he did a video talking about Marvel Land coming to California Adventure, and I could Ooh. not be more excited about that. Yeah, it's definitely something that's well needed. Yeah. Maybe I should do it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I should make it on Second Star, yeah? Oh, I'll, I'll watch it, obviously, yeah. <laughs> I'll watch it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I'll definitely yeah, I got do my it. viewership. That's all I need. Um, Aquad Arsic did the same exact thing. I see. Marvel Land officially coming to Disneyland. Um... I'm kind of interested in this concept because they're finally taking out Bugs Land, which I thought they should have done years ago, but... Um, Thomas would have been arguing with you. Oh, so for me, I love a Bugs <laughs> Land just because, one, a Bugs a Bugs Life really is... It's, it's one of those it's movies. Uh, but for me, um, it's so much the environment. I truly believe that in all of California Adventure, uh, I would argue even now with... Um, with Cars Land, that A Bug's Life was always the one that really kept you in this world. The fact that there was all these, you know, you can look up and there's a clover leaf above you and there's strands of grass and you look up and you see yeah. the Tower of Terror. So it looks like you're looking at the Tower of Terror um, as the perspective of an ant. But now Tower of Terror doesn't exist, so it only makes sense that, you know, they also rip away the Bug's Land doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to make it that way. I will agree with you. When I was a little kid, that was my area. I would, mm-hmm. I loved it. Um, I'm honestly thinking about when I get better, yeah. going back to Disneyland and giving it one final. Switch. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. As a, as a, maybe I might vlog it. I don't know though. I mean, it's been kind Ooh, of it's okay. been kind of hard to do Disney stuff when I'm a horror channel and shit. And but I don't know. Yeah, I'm, we I'm get that. Yeah, ways we get that. In the future. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It depends if people want it or not. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um. But nonetheless, um, I think I'm more excited. A lot of my friends are not excited to have a Marvel land, and I'm just like, all right, well, you don't have to go. That's less lines I have to wait. Dude, go. he's so right. That's it is. Like, yeah, he's exactly so right. I think um, what? Okay, now we're gonna totally spin into this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, from, from what we've seen promotionally, the fact that there have already been uh, patents for, for a new right? Spider-Man swinging uh, yeah. ride. Um, so I think what that land is going to be towards is really, I think it's going to be more like California Screaming, or should I say the Incredicoaster, where it's going to be mm-hmm. a lot more rides that are geared for for uh, teenagers and older, that it's going to be, um, Cars Land is going to be the new hangout spot for, for families. What's that. It? Yeah. Basically, Marvel, uh, this Marvel expansion, which is not going to be immediate, right? We're probably going to get, we're going to get the Spider-Man ride in 2020, but then it's going to, that's going to be Phase One. Phase Two will probably be Hollywood Land, where there's Monster Zinc, there's the Frozen and the and the Pantages uh, look alike. No, it's called the Hyperion Theater, um, and uh, <laughs> the, the Academy. Uh, like the, the where you could draw these characters, that's going to probably be shifted into d- yeah. The animation academy is now going to be draw Iron Man, draw oh, Spider Man. Yeah. So that that it, there's a lot of what I think is good with having a Marvel Land, but there's also like, I love that Monster Zinc ride. I'm not ready for that to go away. I'm never gonna yeah, answer. we'll go. We'll go. I heard it's boring. <laughs> Those people who ever told you that. Need to go write it again. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't write that right. Um, um, yeah, I, it was a very bold move of them to incorporate Guardians of the Galaxy in. Um, mm-hmm. And when I found out they were taking Tower of Terror, yeah, I was a little disappointed. I liked that ride. Twilight Zone is amazing, but 
when I found out they were making Guardians of the Galaxy, I was like, well, I, I like Guardians of the Galaxy more, so obviously I'm going to be up for that. I'll, but, tell, I'll tell you now, Anthony, I have not gone on Mission Breakout just because I'm like, I loved Tower of Terror. I can't. I loved it too much. I can't go on this imposter. And, and, and I'll have you know, I've been on the ride four times back to back when I went one early morning when there was no line. Good for you. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> every opportunity I get. Because I, it's just, I love comic books i love the marvel universe i love dc but walking into the collector's collection it's just like i want to live there all my ashes just spread it there like there's so much authentic stuff in there from previous movies that i'm just like freaking out over dude like and then when you ride the ride they put like different songs on so it's like it gets you pumped up to to it's pretty good. It's ride. pretty good. Yeah, and it's but just it like play. the music's so lit. There was something yes, about it's... Twilight Zone where I was just like, okay, I mean, yeah, it's got a scary vibe, and like, it was a more of an, an uncomfortable fun. Now with Guardians of the Galaxy, it's a more fun fun because now they got like music that I like playing as it goes, and they got some pretty good videos in there. Yeah, well, we'll see. <laughs> Thomas, if I have to go down to Disneyland and drag you on the ride. Well, April 27th, we'll be there, so <laughs> if you're there April 27th. <sighs> but um, nonetheless, let's get back to yeah. our uh, This Week on YouTube. That's there for we go. another <laughs> time. Uh, we're going to go down to Zombie Chris now. He's our uh, need-to-know guy over there in our Orlando yes. for HHS. He's our favorite. Video. He's our uh-huh. favorite. <laughs> um, but he does other stuff besides horror, which I do like. Uh, he made a video on Leprechaun Returns in 2019. Um, I could tell he's not looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, he does also a, a video on Marvel Superhero Land coming in 2020. Uh, mm-hmm. Three word guessing game Disney Edition. For all you people who like to have a little I trivia. I should try that. Yeah, I love trivia. There you go. Uh, HHN 2018 update and first code name. Mm-hmm. And his last video, How to Fix the Walking Dead. Um, so yeah. You we'll just know. cancel it. That's how you fix it. it. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> you know, I'm going to add a new one because, uh, okay, go for it. I don't, I don't know why I haven't added it in a while. Um, you haven't put up content on the channel for about two weeks, but I will add it just, uh, for the future. The second star channel, go down oh, and subscribe <laughs> and... Check it out. If you both, if you love both Disney and Jazz, you're gonna like this channel. Thank you. It's very soothing. Very uh <laughs> Call you out, dude. Really Where's that content at? <laughs> the content the fans demand more. I'm sure they do, but also I am a full college student oh, I get who you, had had finals to prepare for, so Yeah, but so we're expecting it soon. Uh, you oh! are expecting it so soon that you might even see something. <gasps> Say tomorrow. Uh, that would be like me that'd be doing it that all night. The those day after tomorrow, like, like the movie. Ten to fifteen hours to make those videos for Second Star, because you think the HHN community is bad, the Disney community. You say you mispronounce someone's name, they rip you to shreds. So I love Disney. <laughs> I love everything. I think the more and more I've been involved in horror, I've always had to balance it out with being more and more involved with Disney, <laughs> but. I, yeah, you gotta be like cross oh, your yeah. teeth, dot your eyes with Disney. Yeah, Michael Eisner. <laughs> exactly. That uh, that is it for this week in horror. Um, I just want to thank my guest, the League of Extraordinary Vloggers, um, thank for you. having us. Because I never thought in a million years I'd probably uh, have a full down two hour conversation with them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Honestly, Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, True. honestly, if I had to explain, if I had a couple words to uh, tell you how these guys are, down to earth, cool guys. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. It's honest to God. I've watched your content for so long. Uh, like I said, George uh, was so mad that he couldn't be here, but I told him I'd try to maybe uh, persuade you guys to come on a future episode. Uh, yeah, fun. I think we'd come back, right? Yeah. yeah. To meet yeah. George, because <laughs> I know George would like to ask you guys a bunch of stuff, mm-hmm. because... Uh, like I said, George is just as big as a fan as I am. Uh, Always. So that's going to be it for the podcast. Um, there you go, right there. TLAB, go TLAB. subscribe to their channel. Actually, 
I'm gonna let Josue say that because Josue's got an iconic line he says at the end oh, of the video there we that go. I love to hear. Josue, what are they? Uh, what should they do if they come across your guys' channel? Man, you're already on the channel, so you know, just, just subscribe. Come, come join the league. We are a family, and we're only getting stronger. And since you're here, please subscribe to Knights of Horror. Mr. Zaragoza is doing amazing work. It's going to totally skyrocket from here. So heck keep yeah, up. Knights of Horror, they get an update. Oh, they are. Oh, they're I'm gonna try, they're up man. There. I'm How just, uh, I'm just kind of doing what my. Uh, Pro to, or you know, or my uh, mentors taught me. So keep it up. Keep, keep the grind up. Man. Respect yeah. the grind. Yeah. All right. Well, that's gonna do it for tonight's episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast. I'm your host Anthony. These are my special guest stars: Thomas, Josue, <laughs> Mister E, hey. the League hey. of Extraordinary Vloggers. Woo. We'll see you guys next time on the Mindless Horror Podcast. Later, y'all. Bye bye.